That's what I like about Something Awful forums. Um, it costs $10 to join that forum. And that $10 paywall, it clears out the bullshit. Okay, here's something I've been thinking about a lot. I feel like with Twitter, people's name and like identity should be attached to Twitter. Because I think it's too big, it's too toxic, and it fucking sucks. You really don't want to get teased at by an anime avatar. There has to well, it's not that. It's you just think like there, there has be... to be some accountability. And yeah. maybe it's the maybe it's the something awful solution. And before I was like, no, everything should be completely anonymous all the time. And I still believe that there should be websites like that. I don't think Twitter should be one of them anymore. I think people should have to be accountable for their like it that should should be connected to. Well, them. you can you you can be accountable without using your real name. Like you can register it under like an email address that isn't like a disposable email address, even if you don't want people to see your real name and stuff. Because there's other reasons, like say like people who aren't out and who are gay talking about gay stuff maybe not don't want people knowing knowing that about them. I guess so. Yeah, I would also think maybe there's better websites to do that on though. Yeah, but you can't just like I mean, Twitter is like. Twitter's Twitter. People use it. You can't just be like, not for you because of this change, I guess. You know? I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe a dark Twitter. Dark. Maybe that's the solution <laughs> to all this. You get regular Twitter, and that's like, in full daylight, gotta have everything up on there. And then you have dark Twitter. But it's dark Twitter is opt-in or opt-out. Because I would want to opt the fuck out of dark Twitter. Because my current Twitter, let me tell you, that is some fucking dark Twitter. Do you not have a private horny account? Uh, no. I think about it sometimes, but then I know it's just going to get fucking leaked eventually. Everyone's private accounts is just, like, depression and oh, hardiness. I do not like people's private accounts. Yeah. Well, some are, some are kind of fun, and then sometimes it's like, oh, shit, I don't know if I should have seen that. Yeah. But then I follow some private accounts where I don't know the person that well, and it's mm -hmm. like, not sure about this. You know? Yeah, things can get really heavy really quickly. Yeah. So when Twitter was first introduced, it was microblogging. Yeah, I, and the that, idea I was, remember that term. And the idea was that you would just be like, feel like a coffee today, or it's lovely outside. Mm -hmm. And now it's just turned into this, like, 14 bullet point dialogue about radiators. See, I think both those things are terrible. I think the super casual blogging... That fucking sucks, and no one is good at it. People who do it maybe think other people who do it are good. No one is good at it. I think there are so few tweets and tweet threads that I enjoy. I enjoyed Neve's banana thread. That is a good thread. I was like, you know what, <laughs> now, Brian? Look, I don't want to get too on you. We're all a little, we're all a little sleepy. We're all, all a little on edge. But would you get your fucking act together for this podcast? My throat is tired. <laughs> My chamomile tea is too hot. The banana tread is like, that's joy. I'm bringing joy <laughs> in the shape of bananas mm. to people. But it's also a lesson in semiotics. True. I like to see like whenever an apple is used really seriously in a film, like they're trying to use it as this kind of moment of like full of symbolism. And I was like, the mm. evil of woman. Anything, anything like that. And it's just like, imagine if that was a banana. And then it's instantly hilarious. It's a yeah. very funny looking fruit. It I know in the Godfather films, they use oranges. And oranges are always shown before someone dies. Why? Why? <clears throat> Don't know. Do you think they're trying to like, it's not really even a symbolism thing. Maybe they're trying to set up like a subconscious tick in your mind where you yeah. get on edge. I, I, I think orange is like a color of change where it's like, mm. it's a temporary color. Like, you know, with traffic lights, it goes from, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's the bridge between a transitionary, stop and go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Transitional period. So, like, oranges have more, like, semiotic clout than a banana. Okay. I'm not interested in that conversation <laughs> anymore. Brian. Yes. Your Twitter activity kind of fascinates me because you don't partake in Twitter at all. No, but I read headlines occasionally. Yeah. I, I like... I, you I, keep I'm an on... eye on things. Because oh, yeah. you know more about my Twitter activity sometimes than I do. Like, you'd be like, oh, that person tweeted that, yeah. And I'm like, what? Oh, I find it fascinating. Yeah. I, I, I do like the metrics of that stuff. I despise them. That's fine. Well, like, it would probably bother me if it was my own Twitter. Mm. Uh, I have one tweet. I might do another one later this year. 
depending on like you know I, I might have something to say mm-hmm. I look forward to it it's gonna be another classic yeah well what was the last one Doctor Who more like Doctor Pooh <laughs> fucking brilliant that is some <laughs> some top drawer shit right there it's great because like it'll be relevant like no matter what year <laughs> it is as well <laughs> So, here we are, and each of us has a drink, but they are all different drinks, and I think this is mildly, mildly, not really that, but kind of interesting. Me, what do you got? I've got a coffee. I got a beer. Chamomile tea with ginger and honey. Not quite sure how you all ended up with different drinks, but that's how we roll on the Let's Fight a Boss podcast. The world's... How's it going, Brian? Strongest. Strongest video game podcast. I am sitting here with two of the most advanced androids that has ever walked this earth. To my left, with a CPU power of over eighty-five thousand kilobytes. Kilobytes. It's Brian Droid. Hey, uh, it's twenty nineteen, and I'm here to love you. And to my right. Brought to us by the newest i7 Intel processor, it's Neve Borg. It's 2018 and you're going to have to go forward in time to kill me. Fuck. I can't believe Neve's a Borg. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'd hate to be a Borg. But there's a, there's a cool lady Borg. Oh, she yeah. And she's been cured, but she still has remnants of it. Oh. You can be cured of being a Borg? Oh, so yeah, you like can. A zombie. You're, you're, think, you're thinking of the one who fought the rock. Are we still talking about Star Trek? Yes. Okay. The Rock was in an episode of Star Trek and he fought the Lady Borg. It was very good. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like weird parasitic robot things. Can I talk about wrestling for a sec? Yeah, go for it. There's a pirate wrestler I like. Her name is Kyrie Zane and she makes me happy. Um, I saw that Becky Lynch was getting more push to the forefront of she stuff. She won the title. That's cool. I'm She's excited. She's really cool because they're trying, they tried to turn her heel, mm-hmm. but people love Becky Lynch so fucking much that no one's, they're just, people are just cheering for her anyway. So now she's what's known as a tweener, <laughs> which is like where you're not face and you're not heel. So like a real famous example of a tweener would be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay. But like he was face, but he was only face because people cheered for him. You know, I feel was, like... He was bold. It's a very, like, with wrestling, it's like you're either face or heel. Like, that seems very... It does seem kind of limiting. Well, it's... That's just kind of how the business works, because you always want the audience to be rooting for one person, and so the other person's job becomes make the audience cheer for the other person. Yeah. It's a, it's like, it's a... It's a, it's meant... It's rooted in live shows. Like, say with something like Lucha Underground, where it's more of, like, a drama and, like, less of a live experience, the idea of heels and faces is less because the audience don't matter as much Mm -hmm. but audience clearly like respond to this kind of neutral character not neutral but this kind of in between like a bad boy with a heart of gold she's a bad girl with the heart of gold she's great I love her she doesn't have a heart of gold she breaks people's arms people with a heart of gold sometimes need to break some arms I guess so yeah but no she's killing it it's fucking it's breaking my heart what they're doing to Asuka just complete wasted potential when she got to the main roster really <sighs> yeah just just devastating but now you guys are gonna have to stop me at some point now Asuka's old tag team partner from Japan from fucking stardom Io Shirai this super fucked up awesome heel Japanese girl wrestler recently signed to WWF I am so pumped Brian how's it going buddy I'm good uh, okay so I saw The Black Klansman directed by Spike Lee Okay. That's enough of that. Uh, This is a very good film. I like Spike Lee movies. His career is very interesting. He makes a lot of films, but only a couple of them get mainstream distribution. Did a very good uh, story mode from NFL, or was it NBA? NBA, yep. I think there was NBA (laughs) 2K17. There was a ghost in it. I I, I think it was either the 16 or 17 uh, iteration of that I think it was 16. Yeah, and he directed the story mode, and it was a legit Spike Lee joint. Spike Lee joint. Which is what he calls his productions. Um, the last Spike Lee movie I saw was the American remake of Old Boy. I uh, didn't know that was him. Yeah. Uh, that's a film. 
uh, I think like I really like Do the Right Thing and I like uh, Inside Man yeah. stuff like that uh, but this is definitely one of his better films as well Black Klansman cool um, so the short of it is it takes place in the 70s and it's the first black cop in a Colorado town and he wants to become a detective and he's a real go-getter but he decides on a whim to ring the KKK hotline and does a white guy impression down the phone and gets details and information sent out to him and all of a sudden has to meet them in real life and has to get uh, another detective to pose as him uh, in person Uh, so it stars uh, Denzel Washington's son, who I did not know was an actor. He used to be a football player. Can't remember his name. John David Washington, I think. And then it has Adam Driver as well as uh, the guy who pretends to be him in person. And it kind of turns into a buddy cop movie uh, halfway into it. But I think the original story is very different to the final film. But it's a really, really cool like movie. Um, and it's two hours long, which I think was a bit too long. I wish it was an hour and a half long. I feel like that's so many movies. Anyways. Yeah. Um, because the movie sort of ends, and Spike Lee is still fucking angry because it's it's 2018, and he doesn't agree with the current political situation. And it ends with footage of Charlottesville from last year, and memoriams to to a person who died at that. And that didn't have anything to do with the story, really. Mm. Yeah. The film also opens with Alec Baldwin for 10 minutes playing a real person that was racist and then is not in the film anymore. Weird. So, like, the top and tail of this movie don't have anything to do with the movie. Just cut them out. Yeah. Um, But then, like, it feels like a black exploitation film as well. And it, like, they're definitely, like, alluding to it as well because there's bits where they're talking about black exploitation films. Uh, Because it does kind of feel really silly at times. Um, Because it is like a ridiculous situation that a black guy became a car carrying member of the KKK. And like had several phone call conversations with one of the Grand Wizards of the KKK. uh, I still can't believe they're called Grand Wizards. Like it it blows my mind every time. So like there's bits where he's talking to a guy called David Duke. And he's played by Topher Grace from That 70s Show, Er Eric Foreman. Really? And it's really, really fucking good casting. That's like, amazing. Um, and like he's just he just plays the biggest fucking dickhead. And like this guy was at Charlottesville, like he's still alive. Yeah. He's still like he's vocal front and center with all this shit. Um but there's a cool like fuck you moment with his character at the end. But uh, afterwards I was reading the trivia on it, and the trivia for this film's fascinating. Like with Topher Grace playing that role depressed him so much that he re-edited the Hobbit trilogy into one two-hour movie. Really? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah. I just need to focus on my project. Like, yeah, just something that difficult. I, I, I don't know. It's a really cool film. It, 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 it's cool that like a year after Get Out, because uh, this is produced by Jordan Peele as well, and it was a story that he found because it's based on a book. But he found the but like he read the book and then he was one of the producers attached to it, and he kind of pushed this film forward, getting made. So. It's cool that this film exists, and I can't wait to see what n- happens in the next kind of wave. Yeah. Cool. Neve, mm-hmm. tell us about Will and Grace. Will and Grace is this new, interesting sitcom, uh, which we haven't really seen before in the history of sitcom because it centers around a gay man. Okay, so Will. Are and- we ready? <laughs> Seemingly not. So I decided to go back and watch the entirety of Will and Grace because. How many seasons was that? Eight seasons originally, um, because I was just like I was just curious to see what it, how it plays in 2018. Because I tried to watch all the Friends after it became available on Netflix, and that sure was an experience. That like you could see the cultural shift, even with technology and just the language used. And boy, can you I, yeah. just threw out that as a series, and I was like, that is crazy. I, I found with Friends though. It was kind of there was a, there was like there was bits and pieces throughout the seasons where I was like ah mm, I don't know about that mm. but th- at, around season eight or nine it's six specifically it's like, there's like yeah. a real hard turn towards a lot of kind of 
kind of grosser shit and I, it was weird i noticed in it because like i was watching it with my uh, girlfriend who never seen it before so it was really surpri- the jokes the gay jokes were really surprising and they really stuck out stood out to her but in the first few seasons there was maybe like one every three episodes yeah and it would usually be ross saying something like gay panicky like he'd be like didn't want to be perceived as gay or it'd be a dig at chandler but someone would be like shut up Ross like there would be a comment about how Ross was being Ross about a situation then when it got to season six there was like four homophobic jokes per episode and there was no commentary from anyone else in the room to be like that's weird yeah and like it's one thing when it's one character it's different when it's kind of like the established norm yeah and that's what I kind of found with it I was like oh this is a bit uncomfortable it felt it's kind of like and like I know this sounds crazy uh to younger listeners but at the time because Friends even had a named gay character with Carol and Susan and they said the word lesbian it was actually kind of a huge deal at the time and I remember liking it a lot because I was like Carol and Susan like were the only lesbians on tv for a while and Susan sometimes feels like the only real person in that series because she's just like yeah i can see that you know she's kind of like ross is such a creep and no one like really calls ross out on his bullshit anyway back to will and grace i decided to do the same thing and watch all of will and grace and it is it started in 1998 and it was a sitcom starring two gay men will and jack and will's best friend grace a straight woman and karen another straight woman and it is amazing how relevant it still is but also how much has changed in one of the episodes grace and will joke about getting married and then she was just like oh well will won't be able to get married if we unless we go to amsterdam or go back to ancient rome because there was no gay marriage anywhere at this stage because it was 98. later on in that season there's an episode that really really hit home or was just really like upsetting how raw it was will is work has has a gym membership and his friend jack is way more flamboyant than will and jack wants to join the same gym and he's working out with will and will is just like can you stop being this like you and jack is just kind of ignores him for a while and will and will is getting more frustrated will is getting more and more frustrated and he's just like i have clients here and jack is like are you not out And it becomes this whole conversation until finally Jack leaves the scene and Will is venting to Grace and he calls, he says like, I wish Jack was not so much of a fag. And just hearing it said on TV and just hearing this kind of internalized homophobia from this character was so horrible. And it's just like, it turns out that Jack had overheard him say it. And Jack comes in the following day and he's trying to act butcher to like save face for Will but he can't do it because he can't be anyone other than who he is and like this is all done in 22 minutes and it's all comedy and it was one of the kind of realest moments I've seen in sitcom in a really long time where I was kind of like that is harsh I understand Will's position of being this kind of internalized homophobia and this fear of being out I understand how Jack is just kind of like trying to be himself and Jack has fought so hard to be so open and be so comfortable with himself so to have his best friend kind of be the one to be homophobic to him is just is just so heartbreaking but Jack can also see it's Will's own personal damage and like this is all just one comedy episode and like it's all hilarious in the middle of it and everything and I just like got to thinking is like where is that version of that today where is the tv program that's fronted by gay people with their stories and like like you know like what like only gay people can tell a story of internalized homophobia you know what I mean and like we can all recognize the pain of that situation but that story isn't told and it hasn't been told and I haven't seen it And I tried to think, like, what sitcoms have gay characters? And, like, the best thing I could come up with with maybe was, like, Kimmy Schmidt and Titus Andromedon's, like, uh, kind of relationship with his boyfriend. And it's just, this is 20 years old. And, like, for all its fault, because, like, it has, it's not, it doesn't treat lesbians great. And it's kind of, there's, there's a whole stuff with class and stuff uh, with Will and Grace. But for all its faults, all it's doing that's good is still so bold and new and fresh watching it in 2018 and that's shocking to me because it kind of shows where we are with representation in general 
Mm. So, like, if anyone's interested, I think Will and Grace holds up a lot. And even when it doesn't, its place in the cultural zeitgeist is interesting enough to watch. And if you're just a gay person who's like, there's nothing for me to relate to, particularly if you're a gay man or a bisexual man, this this Will and Grace might be something you would want to revisit again, because I think it really still has something special that we haven't seen since. And is the new, is the new series coming out or out it's out it's like it's it's aired and you've watched it? yeah i've watched it still... of it. it's it's good it's still good it's cool. it's something that you can't i don't feel like you can drop into without like context because it's it's like it's really like episodic with its humor but the humor only works when you know the characters i was in my like early 20s when i found out that was a gay show really <laughs> because i would always just like be going by it in the channels and i just see like a woman with red hair and a man in a suit and I was like ah I'm good and then I think one day I watched it for like 10 minutes and I was like wait a minute yeah no they're just besties they're not husband and wife Mm -hmm. that's not what this show is about like they used to date before Will came out I think she like Grace was in love with him but he they never dated maybe oh yeah 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 but um but then there's like a weird will they or won't they for one, one or two seasons yeah really it's always a thing where I think Grace is always kind of like, not always, but when she has a like down period in her life, she's kind of like, if only you are. And he's like, I'm gay, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's like a hard kind of thing for them both to navigate. Yeah, I mean, here's an interesting that I noticed in terms of um, maybe who they tried to market it towards when they first brought it out. The laugh track and what jokes are laughed at most the laugh track is kind of from the the perspective of a perceived straight audience. So the jokes that get more, the most laughs are kind of the ones that are kind of like where the punchline is, I'm gay. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, it's never too invasive, but if you kind of listen in, you're kind of like... Oh, so thing. it's like Big Bang Theory where it's yeah. like people who aren't into geek culture are laughing at the like the things that they would understand yes, as exactly. an outsider. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Will and Grace, 2018. Still doing it. 98, yeah. still doing it. <laughs> still relevant. Brian. Yeah. Tell us about Hilda. Hilda, um, Hilda's a new animated series on Netflix, and it's absolutely fantastic. I'm eight episodes into it, and I adore it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the graphic novels by Luke Pearson, and they announced they were going to make an animated adaptation of his comics about two or three years ago. And you'd see snippets of it here and there, but it's finally out, and it's it's on Netflix, which is great. That's the channel you want your cartoon on. Um, it's such a cool uh, transition to see that adapted, because the graphic novels, there's only four of them, and one small starter graphic novel. So they've had to like pad it out and build the world a lot bigger. And a lot of a lot of the decisions they've made are really really nice but it's but it it's kept the exact same look as the graphic novels yeah like it, it's kind of flawless in its translation yeah. um one of the things was the color choices in the original graphic novels hilda the main character she's only made out of four colors because that's all they had with the printing press because it was a limited run printing series and i have one of the original copies which i'm really excited about having now but um so her design in the animated like series it carries over from that which is super cool um like it kind of feels like a mishmash of like a quieter miyazaki ghibli film and moomins and a bit of earthbound especially in the second half when they move to the town and there's kind of strange things going on and the kids yeah uh, are working together to figure it out I am. I actually checked out a couple episodes of this, and I love how it looks. It looks like fucking fantastic. Like even some of the bits where like the animations like less. I still yeah. think just the general level of art direction is phenomenal. Yeah, uh, uh, it's cool because like it's animated on ones, trees, and fives, so it just has a really nice. Because because sometimes it doesn't look that nicely animated. Yeah, especially there's if it's a big crowd few, shot. Yeah, and there's a few few monster animations where it's on fives and it looks a bit rough. Yeah, but um. I, I thought the writing was cool, but I felt like it was kind of maybe a little standard kids show, but I only watched like the first two episodes. Does that get better? Or? No, the writing is incredibly safe. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is exactly what it is. It is a children's cartoon and like 
it is something you watch before you go to bed. Oh, and but, when you said like Moomins and stuff, I kind of because Moomins has this kind of little ex- existential undertone to it. I, that's what I love about yeah. Like, Moomins yeah. is like three percent fucked up, mm-hmm. and I love that. Yeah, it's like so, Calvin and Hobbes. Like there's a little I, darkness yeah, rubbing Calvin through it. So like they they yeah. So like in the second half of the series, they move to Trollberg, and it's a really well established town, and it looks like a Scandinavian town, but it has a big wall around the outside because trolls come in and invade the town. And, like, the kids just talk about it as if it's just, like, yeah, we just have them there because of the trolls. But That's like, cool. But, but, like, the fact that it has a little weird culture is... Yeah. And, like, they'll always hint at something, uh, and then it'll, it'll get explained in the next episode that there'll be, like, some weird, like, detail in the background, or the camera will, like, hold on something. But then that'll get followed up maybe in an episode or two. And there's a couple repeating gags that end up being com- becoming planted payoffs, which is cool. Like, I, I do think they spent their time writing it. But all the jokes are very, they're very safe jokes. Yeah. Sounds like you're having a, it sounds like it's, I looked at it and I was like, Brian's going to fucking love this show. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's exactly it's what you need. you'd make. Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's my jam. Mm, totally. Guys, I checked out Mandy. I was really looking forward to seeing this because I saw the trailers and I was like, this looks rad. And I'm kind of undecided on it because honestly, I meant to watch the rest of it, but we had to stop watching it while I was watching it. Because Michelle was so fucking not into it. Really? She hated it. Oh no, I have tickets for like the one showing and you're not making... I'm like... But here's, here's the up? thing though. Like when I when I was texting you guys during this, Brian, you said that's a cinema movie. Yes. You're mm-hmm. so right. It's an audiovisual experience. It is an audiovisual experience. And like it's the kind of thing where... Like I always wonder would I have enjoyed Spring Breakers if I just seen it on the TV. Mm, I, I, I do think like you need to have your phone in your pocket... And you are giving it your full attention. Yeah. And you kind of wonder but well, like, as you watch I, I was this. intrigued by the movie, but there was bits where I was like, oh my God, come the fuck on. Like, so little happens in the first hour, but it just stretches it on so much. And there's so much of like a character's face filling the screen and they're just talking complete like drug nonsense. Okay. <laughs> so the story is basically that... Uh, LSD cults does something bad to Nicolas Cage and Nicolas Cage gets his revenge and like it's quite it's much more supernatural than I thought it would be and it looks awesome in places but it also does that thing where like it all looks like so extreme and so fucked up that it kind of I feel like I feel like there kind of has to be a grammar with that stuff sometimes like you have to like I prefer stuff like that to punctuate things and to make points as opposed to be like the constant look all the time because then it just starts to feel like slosh i think um with the popularity of this kind of like really neon lighting and stuff you can get it done really well where it's like it's kind of punctuating points and stuff or you can kind of get it where it's aesthetic like it's not a bad thing but i don't like it for that either oh yeah i'm not a big into that and like that's what i got this film was now that said there is totally something to this movie I don't know if it's going to be something that I actually end up enjoying because it was the kind of thing where like, are you ever watching a movie with someone and they're so like, I wish we weren't watching this. And Michelle doesn't get like, Michelle will watch any old bollocks. She has watched so much Dragon Ball Z with me. And it's like, but she was that not into the movie and it's real hard to find to get invested in a movie when someone's like that. Mm. But um, yeah, undecided. I want to give it another shot, but also I- I'm kind of realizing it's definitely... I wanted this to be one of those movies where I was like, oh my fucking god, have you guys seen Mandy? But I don't think it's going to be that for me. I'm curious to see it now. Are you going to the cinema to see it? Um, I'll try, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to see it in as much isolation as possible. I think if you're going to take a shot at this one, you should see it in the movie cinema. Like, I was like five minutes in and I was like, I should be watching this in the cinema. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Uh, this is the director's second film. I can't remember the director's name, but... He also made Beyond the Black Rainbow, which is a really cool title. No, I hate Beyond the Black Rainbow. So oh, okay, what well, I've, no. yeah. What I've heard, I, 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 I also haven't seen that film. I, I just know that is, it's this is like a slightly pulled back Beyond the Black Rainbow. Pulled back is a good phrase to use because the reason I hate Beyond the um, Black Rainbow is it's all done in close-up shot. 
Like, it's all <laughs> fucking... Like, there's no establishing shots. There's no wide shots. There's not even a mid shot. You can't see anything. I would fucking hate that. And I hate that. Yeah. I just hate that. It's just like, I don't get anything just from seeing faces up close. There is a lot of up close faces in this one. I, I think that's fine when it's punctuated it's with everything else to give well. me. <laughs> what? It's a very sad little dick as well. Sweet. Yeah, what? Pretty funny. Just like a really flaccid penis. Yeah. Sweet. And it's funny because in the situation, I was like... I feel like it should be erect. <laughs> well, oh I, I mean, what do I know? We have Nothing. just hit our explicit content. Yeah. Like, I'm taking that box. Mm-hmm. Here we are. How often do we hit that content? Every episode. I, I, I get it for every yeah, episode. Just in case. Well. Well. If you're Fuck under it. 18, don't listen to this podcast. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get... Sometimes I get emails from, like, nine-year-olds and, like, I really like your perfect blue video. And it's like, no, don't fucking watch that video. What's wrong with... I know, it's fine. I, I, are your fucking parents? I used to watch the most fucked up movies when I was eight or nine. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I watched The Fly when I was nine. That's a, that's a movie a nine-year-old should watch. Oh my I watched God. Robocop when did I was I, eight. Did I talk about the guy, the, the... I met some guy in Dublin with his daughter. Did I talk about him before? He, like, he was into one of my Junji Ito videos. <laughs> Okay, I'm guessing from Brian's no. response. I do. So I'm walking down Dublin, and this guy stops me. And just like, Dublin. Just Dublin. And he's like, oh, hey, you're you're Super Eye Patch Wolf. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, man. I re-, and he has this like little girl with him. And he's like, yeah, I really love your Junji Ito videos. And I'm like, oh, cool, thanks, man. And then he's like, yeah, I actually got, it actually got my daughter into Junji Ito. And I look down at her, and I swear to fucking God, she can't be older than seven. And if she's seven, she's like a runty seven-year-old. And I just, like, look down at her and I'm like, Oh! I hope they're not too scary for her. And he's like, No, she loves them. And I look down at his daughter and she looks back up with me with the deadest, blackest (laughs) eyes I have ever seen. And then I was like, Cool! Thanks, man! She should be watching Goosebumps or some shit. Yeah. Work your way up to Junji yeah. Ito. You don't, you don't fucking start with that shit. No, you do not. You watch Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps and, you know, the reboot of Twilight Like, Zone. imagine reading your kid fucking Glycericide. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I, I think the whole thing with Junji Ito and that sort of stuff, and, like, I'm sure it maybe sort of this podcast as well, you sort of discover it on your own, in your teens. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, you read Enigma of Amigara Faults off a weird message board. <laughs> Yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> and, and you just think about it. And then maybe six months later, someone says it in real life, and you hold them, and you go, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how, that's how it that's works. How, that's how Junji Ito works. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I want to give Mandy another shot. I don't know, guys. I, I, I might hate that movie. Nick, I mean... There's a really great scene with Nicolas Cage in a bathroom. Apparently it's a really good Nick Cage film. Oh, he's fantastic. He's really good in it. And, like, he does a really good freak out, but it's like... Like I, I like I was trying to you know I was trying to bargain Michelle down from the ledge because she was pissed <laughs> and she was I was like oh, this the, could Nic- be- the Nicolas Cage bit was good and she made the really good point where she was like yeah they had Nicolas Cage for four days and that's what they got him to do because that's what he does and I was like, like oh, oh. just watch Vampire's Kiss he did it thirty years ago mm-hmm. Brian you have watched the Great <laughs> Happiness Space tale of an Osaka love thief I think. We've talked about this film on the I podcast I think we have before. as well, I but like maybe like pre ter- episode. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah, and I think I don't think we ever gave it. None of us had seen it recently. It just came up. Yeah. I saw it recently just because I'm going to Osaka. You're in warming a cu- up. I'm warming up. I'm going to Osaka in a couple of weeks, and Rebecca and I were like, "Let's rewatch that film because it was made in 2006, and that was a very long time ago." Jeez, twelve years. Yeah, the lads in it looked like Final Fantasy 15 characters. It's that it's that J Rock hair. Yeah. Visual Kai. So for anyone who doesn't know about the Great Happiness Space, and this is a very difficult film to watch. This is one of the most depressing movies yeah. I ever watched. Yeah. Uh I remember we watched it together first time, John. We thought it'd be hilarious. We thought we were gonna have a rollick and good time. <laughs> this is a harrowing, difficult film. Um it's about it follows a male host club in Osaka with and their female customers and it kind of, it like pulls back in layers where you kind of understand one structure and then it kind of goes into another structure and how nobody loves each other and they're just filling a void. So 
What would a woman do in a host club? She would sit with one of the hosts and she would order a big expensive bottle of champagne for her and the others. Like the way it's done is let's say there's like three or four girls and they like a particular host. He sits at the table and three or four of them sit around him and they all pay money to get his attention. And they have a ranking system. So they're trying to compete as well, as well as the customers. And it's this vicious cycle. And when the, perpetu- wi- when, when the women come in, they get a menu of the guys, isn't that it? Yeah. And sometimes they're only available for five minutes, but you're paying for the full hour. Oh. And what you could do as well is you can pay for like a premium table so that maybe later on they'll sit at just that table and there'll be no other customers there. I feel there's some like Skinner box shit going on here. Yeah, it's fucked. You just think you'd make a good host? I would be fine being paid to talk to women. <laughs> then I was like, wait, wait, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, like they're, they're, like, it's a very long documentary and like a, a lot of the stuff now could be kind of like, this this could be condensed to an hour, no problem. Mm. Sure. Because a lot of it is just like, they'll just let the camera roll. You get that with a lot of old documentaries, don't you? Yeah. Like when I tried to watch... Um, Hoop Dreams. And that's a really famous documentary. I was like, Jesus Christ. It's like three fly? hours long. Why am I at this guy's birthday for 20 minutes? Yeah, they just shot footage. I don't know. I, I there, 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 there is something about having like a 10 episode documentary for those things and they can you can condense that shit and pace it out. What I think is kind of weird about the stuff you're talking about, Brian, is like I, like, I always remember this was like 20 years ago and I'm sure I've said this on the podcast before. I remember like reading a little newspaper article and it was about how the newest advancements in technology are going to all be to combat. It won't be like, a lot of it's not going to be like, you know, technology based necessarily as in like, you know, improving technology or any stuff like that. The next big things in technology are all going to be to combat loneliness. Yeah. And it's weird because I feel like stuff like the great happiness space, the idea that these people are like personas you know, because they're not like the hosts aren't real people when they're working. They're this idealized version, version no, of a person. Like, like they, 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 they really stressed on the documentary. They're selling an idea of like a, 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 a short term boyfriend. And then like, I think when you extend that to modern period, like obviously there's still host clubs and stuff. But I think that's a lot of why people are on YouTube now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a fucking friendship simulator. Sure is. Um, did you go to a May Cafe when yes. you were in Japan. Yeah. I also did. And it was interesting. I don't know if I'd ever go back to one, but I'm glad I went to one and experienced it firsthand. I went to, like... You went to Made Dreamin', didn't you? Which is a franchise, yeah. Yeah, I went to not a franchise one. It was, like, a little bespoke one. Yeah. And it was, like, a made cafe slash animation studio. And I would say my experience there was pretty positive. The girl was really, like, cool. And um, the only thing I didn't like was there was, like two or three old guys there and they seemed so into it like they kept calling the girl oh, this one girl over and then like when another girl tried to come over they were like no we don't want you we want her or so i assumed from what and that was kind of that was kind of gross honestly yeah like for us it wasn't gross it was just kind of sad and like secondhand embarrassing kind of sad where there was like i feel so bad for this guy but like i i don't know a situation but there was a, a, a single old businessman there, but halfway through our hour session at the May Cafe, they brought out a birthday cake for him. No. And sang happy birthday for him. Well, do you remember... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you rethinking this? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Neva might ask you to cut this out later. <laughs> Brian, remember Hooters in Vancouver? Yo, yeah. Remember there was this one little guy there and he walked up to one of the girls. It was the girl who was serving us and was like, what are your hours over the next couple of days? And she told him. And then he was like, okay, I'll be in for all them. And it was just like, that was the point where I was like, you know what? The novelty has worn off. The reality is setting in. I want to eat my deep fried cheesecake and get out of here. Yeah, here's a big tip. Thank you so much. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're so sorry we looked at you. Uh, yeah. Hooters, not so fun without your girlfriends. Just feels weird. Yeah, like, we were there, I, th- I think the walk towards it, we were like, there it is, that was really good, and the cheesecake was really good, mm-hmm. and, like, the chicken was cool, um, you know, chicken. The server was super cool, she was really nice. Yemi was lovely, she was sound. So fucking sorry that she had to put up with us. 
Not that we did anything, just, it was weird, I don't know, it's fucking weird. Who does is weird, Neve? It is. But thankfully it's dying because of us. Millennials. <laughs> <laughs> I... Yeah. Did, I... I'm not, Apparently I'm not. millennials aren't as into boobs, is that what I... I think they don't want shitty food. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. They, yeah, they, I choose to. Like that, that was the shocking thing when I went there. Like, I mean, the whole thing is shocking, but like, I was just like, wow, the food sucks as well. Like, you, you mean like, why, why? It's a very strange kind of sports bar. Yeah. And like, they didn't serve alcohol for the longest time either. So I don't know, like, because you can't like you for, for for like especially in its prime, you couldn't go there for a beer. I really just want a Hooters T-shirt. It's really irony. <laughs> you, are, you are an enigma wrapped in a riddle, wrapped in a Hooters t-shirt. Let's just see how we get on. Let's just I, see how we get on. I feel like it's a good bed t-shirt. Michelle's saying that she's like, yeah, I like, I like the tank slips. They're cool. And I was like, really? They do have a cute outfit. Yeah, they do. A, yeah, it is super cute. And it's, I guess, the important thing to stress a complete novelty for us because there is none in Ireland. No, yeah. there is not. And so you see them and you're like, no way! It's just mm-hmm. like... It's the American version of a maid cafe. Yeah. yeah like, it it's is. so crazy conceptually to us that we're just like, whoa, Hooters! <laughs> like, from TV. <laughs> yeah. Just like Married with Children. Or that yeah. film with Tila Tequila. Was she in a movie? It was like, I pronounce you Chuck and Larry. It was a really homophobic movie with Adam Sandler in it and Tila oh, Tequila was a and wasn't the whole girl? wasn't the whole joke like no yeah yeah it was literally a no homo movie that was a genre oh, I guess yeah, at yeah. the time Happy Madison at it again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. great so guys let me tell you about my favourite reality TV show of all time I've been watching this show for like 10 years and I never tire of it and I love it so much I want to talk about Dragon's Den is that still going? Boy, is it. American, UK, Irish? Get that American shit <laughs> out of my fucking television. Get that Paddy bullshit <laughs> out of my television. I want the UK Dragon's Den. I want Deborah Meaden. I want Peter. I want Tuka Suleiman. I want all my guys. So, I really like Dragon's Den. If you haven't seen it before, I think the American equivalent is Shark Tank. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like the British one because they're meaner. It tends to be for smaller businesses, but I find you get a lot more kind of ordinary people trying to make it, and so the drama is much higher. I just think this is a fucking fantastic TV show, and I'm watching, I think they have season 12 and 13 on at least UK Netflix, um, and it is just so good. They got... they brought a new woman in uh, Sarah Willingham who's like she's like a restaurant tycoon and she's really like funny and cool and nice but she's also a really good dragon but they also have this other guy called Tuka Suleiman and he is like he's like a strong successful version of Gollum from Lord of the Rings <laughs> <laughs> oh god and like I love him I think he's great but He's like this, he's like a little goblin of a man. <laughs> so, like, he'll do things, like, someone will, like, there'll be someone trying to sell, like, a, you know, a craft whiskey or something, and he'll drink it, and he'll go, I don't usually like whiskey. Here's my head. <laughs> and, like, that's kind of how he speaks. And it's really, really good. But, like, um, what I love about it is it's, like, it's this super easy to watch show because it's this incredibly formatted thing, and it's... All, it's like, you know, every episode is the same. It's like four pitches. So, you know, a person will come in, they'll pitch their business and they'll go through like the financials and everything. And I, I, I really like learning about that stuff. I think it's interesting. But, you know, it's the kind of thing where you're watching it with someone like, and, you, you know, me and Michelle watch it together and we're like, this guy's fucked. And like, we watch so much of it at this point. We know what pisses off the dragons. So if someone comes in with an evaluation that's just too high, they'll be like, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking for... Um, you know, ten uh, percent at two hundred value to two hundred thousand, and we're like an evaluation of over two million. Better have good turnover there, son. <laughs> and it's really, really fun. But I, I guess I like it because like it does feel brainless when you're watching it. But there is actually really valuable like information in there because you're watching these like really successful people talk about why they were successful 
and they have really interesting insights and stuff like just business and like selling and stuff like that and it's just and like i have no interest in ever getting into that shit but it's kind of fun to learn about you know what i mean yeah i totally see that i can um i really like project runway for the same reason because you have experts kind of breaking down why something works and why it doesn't it's the exact same lazy but educational mm-hmm. watch as project runway so like i can watch i can watch an episode of dragons Den and i don't feel like i wasted my time yeah it's the same with project runway i think they're both great and you kind of get that like relationship with the kind of dragons and the judges where you're just like nina garcia is gonna rip this apart but maybe zach posen will be okay with it and you're kind of because you're getting a taste for their tastes or what like pisses them off i remember the most cutting thing Nina ever said. And I can't do it like she did because she's like a superhero. Nina Garcia, yeah. yeah. But she just looks at it, one of the designers and she just goes, hmm, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> she's fucked. But um, I love it. I love Deborah Meaden. She's been on it since season one and it's kind of been interesting because she was very cold at the start, but now she's kind of She's really warm and she's like just, you know, you don't often get to see like a really cool, successful businesswoman on TV and she's just fucking fantastic and super knowledgeable and really funny and yeah, I love it. If, if any, uh, I, I know most of our listeners are American, but if anyone gets a chance, really like check out like season 12 of UK Dragon's Den. It's, it is a lot of fun. I think that's, that's everything. That's the end of the podcast. That's it. We did it, guys. Um, Thank you for listening to episode 84. Uh, email us at askletswaytobossgmail.com, Patreon, patreon.com for forward slash LFAB, uh, on Twitter, on Instagram. Signal boost the shit. No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know. Podcast. Please unsubscribe. Stop listening. Yeah. There's, this is the end of the podcast. There's no there is further. no more. We've been kind of we've been talking it, and we just get sick of recording to our podcast. So this is actually the end of the podcast. We're not even joking. Strategy talk. Okay, so you guys know how I like to pride myself on kind of like just keeping up with like, I guess just like keeping tabs on like what are the latest trends in gaming, mainly like, I I do like to know like what what the kids are playing, what is popular, and I like to kind of pursue that. I've been playing Dance Dance Revolution for the PlayStation 2. Sweet. Why, John? Why? <laughs> Me and a friend started going to an arcade near us, and they have a Dance Dance Revolution machine, and we started playing it semi-ironically, and then we were both like, wow, this is really fun, and then I was like, I know, we should both buy dance mats and get really good at it, and then he was like, yeah, let's do it, but then only I bought the dance mat. <laughs> And I started going to Token just, you know, on my downtime and blowing off a little steam on the Dance Dance Revolution machines. And it got to the point where I felt my personal journey was being limited by only having it in this one location. And so I ordered a dance mat. And now there's a dance mat in my living room and I play Dance Dance Revolution like a crazy person. Are you hooked up to a PlayStation 2 or a PS4? Oh, Neve, they don't make dance mats for PlayStation 4. <laughs> so this you, is like, you're, you, you're like you a full... You don't understand how dead this genre is. I, can't, I just can't, like, you feel like there would be just one of these games out there? No. It's all, like, just dance with, like, mm. the PlayStation camera. Move kind of thing. Yeah. Which is not what I fucking want at all. And, man, this is the kind of thing where I'm like, okay, I'll play, like, five songs... Then two hours later, I'm dripping in sweat. Sweet. It's pretty fun for that. How do you find the mat? Surprisingly fine. I thought it would just be a piece of shit. Because I, I, I got it for like 50 quid. And, you know, mm. I was looking at them online and like you can spend like thousands on these things. And so I just got the little cloth mat with the stickers. It works good. That's cool. Yeah. Is this like go in where like the controller? Yep. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite song to dance to is Final Gate Heaven. And Neve, if we could, I'd like to use that as the ending theme. We can. But I like Dance Dance Revolution. I like everything about it. Well, technically what I'm playing is Dancing Stage Supernova, which is what Dance Dance Revolution Supernova was called in the UK. But it's like... I like the design of these games. I like all the characters, all the shitty, like 
PS2 model like characters dancing in the background. They're all great. You guys should see the track list for these things. You want some basement jacks? Yeah. You want some fat boy slim? Do I? You want some tattoo? All the things she said? Yeah. Because I don't. Because <laughs> I like my dance dance. Re- I I like my dance dance revolution songs to be from a tiny Japanese person who is singing so fast their heart will explode. That's what I like to dance to. Yeah, that's a genre. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it's been really fun. I'm having a great time. We're happy for you, John. Neve, you finished Spider-Man? Before we go into Spider-Man, let's segue into me playing an old game as well. Go for it. I'm playing Resident Evil 5. Yeah. And, oh, weird. Yeah, and I'm playing a co-op uh, with a friend. Are, are, uh, are you playing the PS4 port of it? Yeah. Okay. Um, just uh, It's a downloadable title on PSN. And I never got to play it co-op when I originally played it because it was on 360. I'm from Ireland. Like, it just wasn't happening. So I played all these games, um, like, five and six. I played them single player with, like, AI partner. And the AI is really, really good. Like, it's really solid. But um, just going through this game co-op with someone and playing... Uh, and watching people play mercenaries and stuff, this game holds up so well, and I like it. Kind of makes me like think about how m- maligned it was when it first came out, because it was like it came after like Resident Evil Four, which was this big shift in like gaming and gaming controls, and like it is a pretty good co-op game, and it still holds up, and it still feels good to shoot things with it. Mm. Like shooting shooting something with a shotgun in that game feels satisfying like throwing a grenade or like putting down a trap mine and blowing something up feels good like it has a really nice tactile response for something that's a port even Mm. um but i'm just i'm just having a lot of fun with it and i i'm surprised at how much i enjoy it still cool yeah that i love resident evil 5 um my only gripe with it is you only have nine item slots don't you yeah and that's for weapons and like health Mm -hmm. and a few collectibles and so you'll get treasure, but you have to sell it at, at the end of each stage, don't you? Yeah. There's no combining it to make, like, super treasure later on like you do in 4. Um, I, I, I missed that, but other than that, I it was a continuation of what I did like. It has Chris I, I, punching a boulder. Yeah. Chris, I, Chris I liked so a lot of the story stuff. I just, I didn't like the co-op shit. Like, I hated having an AI partner. Because I don't want to play Resident Evil with anyone else. I think that's, like, a lot of people went off the series because it went so focused on cooperative because like after four i need ammo. five and six yeah it became co-op I guess, games i guess with four it was kind of like like there was still semblance of horror in four mm-hmm. and i thought there was some good moments in five but i think that's the point where it's like this is an action series five five is a response to gears of war for sure yeah, yeah. like chris is fucking huge in that game he's i so know big. he's so big <laughs> arms are just massive I really, really like Wesker in Five. Like any uh, of the Wesker stuff. Five is Wesker's game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh my god! It's so and like I really like Jill in it as well. And how she's like, she has like a, an emblem on her chest that's controlling her or something. This is Nina Williams' version of Jill yeah. Valentine. And, and oh, her hair colors change. Yeah. Uh, PS4. Is there any way to get the DLC? Oh I yeah. Of, I don't know. Of, I don't think of, so. The mansion. Yeah. There's, yeah. The mansion DLC is really good. Ah, I might look into that. I don't know. Um, it might be bundled with it. Some good Wesker, I think, choke slams regular Jill through a table. Holy shit. <laughs> I just love all the Wesker stuff and how there's one bit where you're controlling like a satellite from space to fire like laser beams. What the fuck did that game series become? Yeah, like I, I really, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of six. I, I, I don't have good memories of six. Do you, I, can't, I, I like six, but a six is the thing again where it's co-op, but like it splits, like it, it's kind of like seven where people could say seven is like two different games stuck together, like six is three different games stuck together. Yeah. The Leon mode is like your haunted mansion survival horror stuff. Your Chris and Piers stuff is um, action shooter like Five was, and then your Jake uh, um, stuff um, is kind of Uncharted esque. Like he even wears a similar outfit with the kind of you're jumping yeah. pl- from platform to platform and running and grabbing broken ladders, ladders, and then when you climb up the ladder, it collapses so you can't go back to mm-hmm. where you were. 
It's Uncharted. It's like, it's a crazy meld of everything. And at the time I was like, I don't know if this is good, but I would like to go back and play it with with the context I have for everything now, you know? Mm, yeah. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. Brian, I'm super curious. Yokai Watch Blasters. Yokai Watch Blasters is a... You know how like there's the mainline Pokemon games, but then there's like what's 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 the word? You know when it's not part of like mystery dungeon kind of stuff. Yeah, mystery dungeon, not spin off. Yeah, not well, no, 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 it's spin off, spin off. Yeah, okay. So this is a spin off of the main Yokai Watch series, but it's not. It's 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 kind of like mystery dungeon or Pokemon Ranger. They reuse a lot of assets, and it's fine. There's a third Yokai Watch game that came out in Japan, and I don't know if they're going to release it over here, because now there's a Yokai Watch 4 announced for Switch, and they might just focus on that. So I think this game is filler to introduce a bunch of characters that they can market then later on for the Switch game. I'm playing a lot of 3DS games at the moment, because they're still releasing games for the 3DS. Would you guys say that Yokai Watch never really like took off too much over here? think that is it's weird in one way because i think as a game it hasn't taken off but as a toy product i see you see i see it a lot in toy shops yeah and like maybe like there's kids buying them just because they look cute and they aren't playing the game maybe do you think maybe it's like pokemon is x weird and yokai watch is that just a little bit too far no no, it's very weird because like the way they were marketing this because i know a guy that had to demo Nintendo games at uh, a game conference and with the Yokai Watch game they weren't allowed to say that they were deceased ghosts or spirits but so, I think that's kind of the like that morbidity is part of the yeah. series charm so they had to say they were Yokai and if people pushed further asking what are Yokai they had to go they're everywhere <laughs> Which, that doesn't mean anything like, yeah, but Brian, Yokai, Yokai are everywhere. They are everywhere. Um, I really like Yokai Watch just because I think the folklore of Japanese spirits it's bounces. It's so good. Yeah, and like it, it does relate back to the folklore of Irish spirits because we have a lot of like minor spirits as well. So um, I, I, I like that aspect of it. I'm looking forward to our Halloween episode. I got some shit. Fuck yeah. Um, this game's fine. Um, it's, what, what kind of genre is it? It's like a 3D Streets of Rage. And you're just walking around the town that you're already in, and you're just doing levels, and they live in a Ghostbuster looking house. It's fine. It's fine. Was that a full price title? Uh, yeah, it was like 40 quid. Hmm. Um, I'll just buy anyway, okay, watch on it though. I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Um, real quick, still playing Dragon Quest Eleven. That game is still just fucking happiness and light pumping through my veins. Like, I feel exactly as positively about it the last time I talked about it. It has done nothing wrong. It just continues to be so much fun. Fought a giant metal man today. It's great. It's really interesting the way the mechanics of that game work. Because it's like, there is all this shit. Like, uh, there's this thing that happens called you go into the zone in the English localization it's called you get pepped up which right and that's the thing where you can do combination attacks between your party but today I was fighting some monsters and one of the monsters got pepped up and I was like oh okay that's cool but then another monster got pepped up and these are just regular enemies Mm. and I was like oh shit then they did a combination attack oh shit and I was like what? And I'd fought loads of these guys and I'd never seen this happen. And I guess that's kind of a cool thing about the game. It feels like there's just a lot of little shit that you might not see, you Mm -hmm. know? And it is constantly surprising and just still a joy to play. Yeah. Still playing Devil May Cry 3. Think I'm pretty close to the end. Gonna reserve my full judgment till I finish it. But spoilers, it's it's a pretty good game. I don't want to get... I don't want to get super controversial on the podcast or anything, but I think Devil May Cry 3 is pretty good. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, talk about Spider-Man. No, I don't want to talk about Spider-Man. Apologize! <laughs> Apologize! <laughs> Can we talk about another game before we talk about Spider-Man? What other game? 
the game I like. Yeah, go go for it. WarioWare Gold. That game is fucking brilliant. I am so tempted, but I'm also kind of like, I kind of feel done with my 3DS. Yeah, I do not want to dig yeah, that I thing out. I don't want to charge it. WarioWare Gold is my final game for the 3DS until I get Luigi's Mansion port. But like, this feels like the last game for the 3DS. It's so sweet. I am going on holiday soon. Yeah. And it does sound like a really good way to annoy Michelle. This is one of the funniest games I've ever played. <laughs> like, I'm playing it and like, so this has over 300 games and like it collects some of the older games but then it reskins a bunch of them so they feel like they're brand new and I haven't played these mini games or they're micro games because they're only three seconds long. Uh, so it has a big compilation of all these games but like there are some and I'm like what the fuck did I just do and it's over so quick and you're processing it and you don't know what to do and you just go huh? <laughs> like there was one where oh Jesus like like uh, one was just like you just draw like a man and a woman are coming towards each other but you just have to draw the line between them but then it's just got like the worst fucking drawing of a man <laughs> embracing a woman and then this one where it's just like I think it's one of the the fucking developers dressed up as a football player but he's like lying lying like a plank and you just bounce a ball above him that's that's the game the only WarioWare game I played was Smooth Moves and a lot of people told me that's, for the Wii yeah a lot of people told me that's the worst one I fucking loved it. That's a really good one. The the worst one is uh, Game and Wario for the Wii U because that's not e not even a micro game. Okay, yeah. Um, this uses the the Game Boy Advance games. So, well, the Game Boy Advance and the DS. So this is a collection of the original Game Boy Advance game, the uh, motion sensor sequel Wario or Twisted, which is banned in in Europe. Good. Why? Yeah. The tilt sensor in it had mercury, and you okay. children's toys can't have mercury in it. Uh, but but the but the three DS has a built-in gyro sensor, so it mm. works fine. And then it uses the DS game as well because uh, it's How, got touchscreen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was gonna say because I had the DS one. Does that yeah. translate without the dual screen? Yeah. Wait, the three DS has a dual screen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's all perfect. But like, it's Do cool. You like where you were, Neve? Um, eh, I like it as much as I like any Nintendo game. Yeah, like th this is this is about as Nintendo as you get. This is a weird ass Japanese game, and like there are like precursors to this, like Bishi Bashi Special made by yeah. Konami for the PlayStation, but like this is just like there's so much being thrown at you. But then like you 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 you'll 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 play it and you'll go through story mode, and the story mode is fully voice acted, and the animation is real bad and it's perfect. It's just exactly what you need. But then you unlock all these weird like meta games. So there's one where you play as Nine Volt in his bedroom. And he needs to go to bed, but he's up late in bed playing his 3DS, playing WarioWare. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> and so you're playing games in bed, but mom is outside your door or outside your window. <laughs> outside your window? <laughs> and it's real fucking creepy because it's just a silhouette of a mom with red eyes. So you're playing WarioWare, but you'll hear her footsteps like tiptoeing up and then you have to hold down the shoulder buttons and he has to pretend to sleep. That's awesome that's pretty good and at one point the television static starts flickering and she crawls out of the tv mom no <laughs> and he's like uh oh okay i'm gonna buy this yeah no like it's really good um i i'm really impressed with this game and it's gonna be in my top five of the year like i i i, I love this no, game. You've, you've sold me on it a hundred percent yeah I, I i it's fucking hilarious okay you have boat wrote finished spider-man on the docket and this is my third time trying to bring up this fucking game i don't want to talk about it i don't care do you guys want to talk about spider-man five minutes max that's yeah. all we give it okay um after we talked about it i played it for another 10 hours and then finished it the following day uh, it's 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 a much shorter game than i thought it would be i think you can probably finish it within 15 hours 25 if you want to do everything kind of thing yeah as it went on I did not enjoy the stealth moments at all. And there's, there's, there's a really like tedious part where you play as Mary Jane in uh, Osborne's apartment mm -hmm. and you have to find a key. Yeah. And I had to watch a YouTube video on how to find it. And all the comments were, thank you. <laughs> I know I know where the key is. I found the key. Okay. Did we have this exact conversation last time? No, we talked about it in our chat together. Uh... Yeah. You're getting it confused. I'm very tired. Um, That's okay. 
But uh, I like the idea of flicking over from Peter to MJ. And I like that kind of mix of perspective. But the perspective you get of Mary Jane is her bent over in stealth mode every time. You go to her four times and every time out of the four, it is her doing a stealth sequence. Like I would have just like if she could just walk around <laughs> you know like if there was a little bit Mary more Jane gets in a bar fight <laughs> yeah, maybe anything just like it was like like the first time i did it i was like oh cool i get to take pictures of mary jane then the second time I was like oh they're doing it twice and then the third time i was like oh okay this is this is part of the mission structure this is what i'm going to be doing and you do it four times with miles as well mm. um i didn't particularly like them uh as as i went on with the game uh, it feels like doing a lot of busy work. F- just the kind of the kind of clearing out stuff that yeah. you have to do. Uh, I was a little disappointed in I kind of done all the black cat busy work and I tracked down the cats and I was like, oh, cool. I get to meet black cat because I really like her as a character. Uh, you get to her lair and she's left you a suit, but you don't get to see her. But they had kind of announced that you would see her in DLC later on. And just a game that I kind of felt that hadn't a lot to do in terms of side quests and that I did all these side quests to kind of track her and then to be kind of told that she's in paid DLC. I was kind of like, that's not great. Brian, I didn't do you like ever that. notice that when a game promises Neva girl and doesn't give it to her, <laughs> she gets super... Remember the fucking Firewatch thing? Remember how pissed she got about that? She wants her honey. <laughs> I need to see a girl. <laughs> That's it. That's all I want. Um, what was your percentage uh, at the end of the game? Like, how much stuff did you collect? Um, eighty-seven percent. Yeah, same. I, I I was also in the high eighty. So, like, I think I did a fair amount of the side quests. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I guess my kind of takeaway bits and pieces from it are: he doesn't interact with the public that much. He's not friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He doesn't have any relationship with New Yorkers. The only kind of NPCs you mostly talk to are are, are the cops. Um, he doesn't really talk to like there are there are some side quest bits but like any regular strangers all you can really do is wave at them yeah it's Uh, like the city doesn't feel like new york doesn't feel like uh, visually it's dense but in terms of npcs and their kind of interaction with you it's not it's kind of yeah pretty light and and then in the third act of the game it just becomes arkham city where like all the like regular folk are all quarantined or boarded up in their houses and it's just being overrun by criminals taking pot shots at you like just like Arkham City Mm -hmm. um who are you guys favorite Spider-Man villain uh I like the Green Goblin storyline and stuff yeah Yeah. like yeah Mm -hmm. I I do the Green Goblin super interesting I really like Venom but like with Venom you have to like do the whole build up Mm -hmm. I I like Venom a lot yeah Mysterio is kind of fun did you ever read what Mysterio does in Old Man Logan He's he's a magician, isn't he? Yeah. Or well, like he's into smoke and mirrors. That's he his plays thing. some, he plays some fucking tricks in Old Man Logan. It's pretty good. Continue. Um, the villains, like I was really looking forward to the Spider Man villains because I love Spider Man villains, but because they're all locked up in prison, they don't break out until the very end. So all of a sudden, a shit you not, you've got like fucking five or six boss fights in a row, like one really? mission after another. Or all the boss fights. So they're not staggered that's out. That's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that's kind of underwhelming. And like... Are the boss fights good? Yeah, they're... they're, they're no. I, I like them. I think I think the ones... The, with, yeah, maybe with the minor boss fights. I just thought the last boss fight... The Doc Ock. Yeah, that was one of the worst boss fights I've ever, ever had. It was a four... It was like a four punch combo you kind of repeated over and over again. Like it had two stages, but the the two stages repeated twice. Mm. So it was, it was it was pretty basic. But as well, like my game froze in the middle of the Doc Ock fight, so he just was standing still, and I couldn't do any damage to him. So I had to restart the whole thing, which is kind of you know kind of ruins your momentum. I didn't say this on the podcast during the final fight in Final Fantasy Fifteen. Uh, there was a part where Noctis shot off into space. <laughs> Did you get that on video? Uh, yeah, it's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would Sweet. Like to see that. <laughs> yeah, it just. <laughs> My planet needs me. You know the real traumatizing <laughs> bit for you in Final Fantasy VIII? Mm-hmm. It was like that, except there was nothing I could do. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Final- Spider Man. Yeah, no. Um, it's a game. It's the first of the AAA season that. There's all these other games coming out. 
I don't think people are going to remember this by Christmas. It's going to be real fucking cheap. I think cheap. this is going to win some Game of the Years. I don't think anyone's going to remember it by next Christmas. Yeah, I... I re- this, this doesn't deserve high praise at all. I, I, I mean, even from the things I have heard people talking up about this game, it sounds like I would absolutely detest the game. But, I mean, people like it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I just think, like, as soon as something like Red Dead 2 comes out, mm. everyone's just going to be like... Pfft. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm in for Red Dead, for sure. Yeah, I, th- I think we're all going to be playing yeah. that game. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think we're all going to play Fallout 76, and then we're all going to play Red Dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody's playing that. Who the fuck's going to play? Do you know what I love about Fallout 76? It's like, I'm not even that into Fallout, and all the features I like about Fallout, they're like, we're taking them out for this game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who is that game for? Uh, Beth- Bethesda have crazy fanboys, like... But crazy fanboys like the NPC characters of those worlds. Like, no, they like- crazy fanboys, like... People who like the NPCs of Bethesda games either... Well, not it's not a Bethesda game. They either play New Vegas or they play Fallout 1 or 2. Mm-hmm. But people who like the kind of, yeehaw, go anywhere, do anything. I don't know what that voice is. <laughs> they, they like they they play Fallout 3 and 4. But I feel those people will go to Red Dead Redemption online because like, they're doing a beta for that. Yeah. But Pit Boy. <laughs> You've convinced me. Yep, there you go. Fallout is the Reddit of video games. Jesus. I'm not sure what that means, but it does make sense. So, but sometimes Ryan says something, and I don't know what he means, but I feel it. Mm-hmm. I was like, that argue true. Yeah, no, it's true. no, like, just, just... can't argue with that. If, it, like, each day, if you go on r slash gaming, someone's got a follow thing going. And it's been like that for five years. What? Maybe ten years. Can Who I knows? tell you guys about my favorite r slash gaming post? It was at the top of the pile, and it was like, hey, guys... I like this girl in my town who cosplays as Shell and I just want some advice on what I should do. Here's her picture. She goes on my town Reddit sometimes and the most upvoted comment was like, hey dude, she's going to find this incredibly creepy because of how unbelievably specific you've been with all the <laughs> all the um, information you've given here. So yeah, good luck with this one, buddy. <laughs> There you go. Oh, there you go. Um, just before we leave Spider-Man, this game has uh, after the credits footage. Oh, yeah. Because it's a Marvel game. And the credits are like 35 minutes long. They're it, long credits. Oh, this, this, this is a Marvel game. Like, it's got a... It, it, like, they have motion captured Stan Lee for three whole seconds in this movie. Mm-hmm. God damn it. That sucks. <laughs> that so must much. have been so much work to get Stan Lee in that movie. Like, oh, he's probably doing nothing. Yeah, no, but like... Like so, some someone had to like build that model and animate it, and like he's not in the game at all except for three seconds. Anyway, there's an in credit scene, and it actually made me go, "Oh," because I wasn't into the story at all. Like kind of like yeah. as Brian's just said, it's really bottom heavy with all the kind of boss characters. It feels like a setup for a better second game, which I find just kind of conceptually annoying. But um, the last the the end credit scene had this kind of I'm not going to spoil it but I had this moment where I was like that's an interesting take okay because a bad guy I yeah, want yeah. I want and I still don't know if I'd play it but I want The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and the subtitle is just Spider-Man fights Venom now that yeah <laughs> let's just see how we <laughs> that's, get on that's it let's see how we get on <laughs> okay before okay how excited are we about the Venom movie <laughs> Very excited because I love super villains and I like Tom Hardy and the, what's that other fucking piece of shit movie that everyone hates? Fallout Squad, Bullet Squad, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad. I love that movie. I am looking forward to this. I think this is like I love seeing bad movies like this in the cinema. Like like it feels like a Resident Evil. Yeah, we don't know it's gonna be bad. Well, like bad God, good. It's good, gonna bad. be where Venom's on a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. It's going to be bad. Should we all go see Venom? Yeah, I would yeah, love to. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that seems next, like a good group movie. Next, let's fight a boss yeah. cinema day <laughs> we're set. Gonna, we're let's see Venom. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Spider-Man. Like, I myself am a bad boy, and so Spider-Man doesn't really resonate with me, but someone edgier like Venom would. 
Quick time events. Capcom Vancouver closure. This very, that's really sucks for the people at that studio because I think they were a pretty hefty operation, but they had pretty much just become the Dead Rising studio, right? Yeah. I never felt that that was a great fit for them. I kind of feel like maybe they didn't quite get what was cool about Dead Rising and I think that reflected the more of those games came out. I think, you know, especially in the later ones, you started seeing a lot of really just... Not even negative reviews, but just kind of tired reviews, and I think that translated into sales, and I think that's kind of what happened there. Regardless, fucking really super, super sucks. I think from what I read, it sounds like the employees are getting taken care of okay, like they got decent severage, uh, severance, and their Capcom set up a jobs fair for them. Which I think is really good. Yeah, that's it, it, really that's, good. That's yeah. really cool. Like, kind of the bare minimum you can kind of do, but you should be done. Yeah, and like I'm, I'm, I'm glad they did because like, you know, I can't imagine what it's like for a lot of those people. But um, yeah, that that's that's a shame. Um, we got the PlayStation One Classic. Yes. So this is our December. 3rd. I think this is going to be another one of those things where our reaction to this is very different from a lot of reactions I've seen. Because, like, I don't know, I felt... I kind of saw this and I was like, oh, it's like a Nintendo classic. But I guess I kind of thought PlayStation would, like, push it further or, like, have online play or more games. Mm. And, like, people would say, like, oh, but that's going to increase the cost. I'd be kind of okay with that, honestly. Yeah, if it kind of synced maybe to your PlayStation account or something and it had yeah. trophy support or... Yeah, I don't know, something. But then the the weird part was they haven't announced all the games, at least not there's, yet. There's That's, 20 games yeah. and they've announced five. That really got to me because they opened pre-orders before announcing the games, and I just think that's kind of anti-consumer yeah, just generally. I feel like there are so many games you... Well, there's so many games I feel like you'd have to have, but then I feel so many of them are tied up in weird license games. Like, even take Konami alone. Mm. Like, you have to have... I think you have to have Metal Gear Solid, and honestly, I think you have to have yeah. Metal Gear Solid VR missions as well. Um, there are very few Konami games on the SNES Classic. Um, there's maybe one or two. It's very difficult to get those licenses. Brian, Konami do going on. They do. <sighs> they do Mystical Ninja. Um, yeah, they, like... The, the, the amount of Konami licensed games, uh, in, in, especially in the 90s, was insane. Brian, can we stream going on someday? Sure. I've got it. Um, these are the five games that they've announced. It's Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, uh, R4 Ridge Race, Racer Type 4, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. Is Hogs of War on there? No. Did I make that up? You can make up whatever you want. I've been saying, oh, weird, Hogs of War is on there. That's strange. I think I made that up. Unless Hogs of War is another secret title for one of these. John, I, I, I don't know. It's it, it's okay to imagine something and then believe it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Those are the five titles. And the, the, the one thing that jumps out to me is the Final Fantasy VII. I don't know why you put that as a selling point a few days after the announcement of like the Nintendo Direct and all the Final Fantasy stuff coming to that because I feel like the Switch is a better fit for wanting to play that game. Yes. But I think this is a nostalgia thing. And yeah, they're totally. they're selling to people who wouldn't own a Switch. Yeah, this Seven's just been out on everything. The, the, think about the, the amount of people who bought like Nintendo and Super Nintendo classics who have yeah. never, you know, who don't own yeah. anything. So yeah, like, uh, there's an age group that are older than us, like, in the 90s, who had been in their mid-20s at the time, and they would have been super into Wipeout and shit like that. And now they're in their mid mid to late 40s, and, like, they have fallen out of video games. Mm. This is the perfect Christmas present for a dad. Or it's such like a Christmas that. present move as well, putting yeah. it out on the 3rd of December. What do you guys need to see on this? The big thing I don't like is the non-analog controllers. Yeah, so yeah, it means there's no ape, there's, there's, there's no ape escape or anything like that. Yeah, but like there's no point having like the Crash Bandicoot game or Spyro because like they already, they just got HD remastered as well. Mm -hmm. It's really strange. Like, what do you put on this? Like, I would like if you could maybe use your PS4 controller if that was possible. Yeah, I'd love just that. Just um, just because it's a USB attachment. That's, I guess that's the thing with it. Yeah. I just feel like it's kind of. 
bare bones. And like, I have my Super Nintendo Classic and like, I've played it and I mm. like it. I don't need another one of those things, you know? I like it like in the sense that I think it's cute. I think the PlayStation 1 was a very attractive console. Like, you know what I mean? I thought it's it's a nice form factor. Yeah, so I like, cool I, gray, like I like I like miniatures button, yeah. and it's nice in that sense. But yeah, I don't know if I would sit down and want to play one of these games on this over say you can get some of the classics for PS4. Like I would rather these were available on my PS4, I think. And like say if th I think there's games that could like if 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 Silent Hill was on there, like the last time Silent Hill One was released was on the PlayStation One, so like you know an a, a upresed version of that, like fuck yeah. Yeah, like playing Silent Hill One through HDMI would feel very good. But then mm -hmm. I feel like if they had if they had like a killer like Silent Hill or Resident Evil, why why is that not why is Jumping Flash announced? Mm -hmm. Jumping Flash, from the makers of Dark Souls. Maybe? Fuck, I might be wrong about that. Could be. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There's no way to ever find out, so... It's fine. So what is your dream list for... Do you want Tenchu? Yes. <laughs> I want Tenchu. I want Silent Hill. I want Resident Evil 1 and 2. I, I feel like you need to have 7, 8, and 9. Like... Final Fantasy? I think if it's yeah. gonna be a PlayStation 1 collection... Yeah. You need... Like, because to, to me, those are... Those games are PlayStation. Wouldn't it be wild if 8 was only released on the PlayStation Classic and never was ported that anywhere else? That would be else? such a fucking... <laughs> like, I would respect that. I would just be like, like oh, what shit. a fucking baller move. <laughs> this is... This is the only way to play it. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see uh, Fighting Force on it. Cause, oh, that game is so good. Because you get two controllers, and I think it's a good like two-player game. Um, I'd like to see um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. I want Vib Ribbon. Vib Ribbon? But you can't play any songs Yeah. No. Um, Fuck. Yeah, it, there's, there's all these weird limitations, yeah. like yeah. that Mape Escape. Like, there's... <sighs> yeah. And like with Metal Gear Solid, you couldn't check the box. Nope. Yeah. And imagine how lame it would be being like, go to the Konami website and go to this. Like, no, it has to be check the box. Yeah, you gotta look at the back of the box. But I guess they could print it, like they could have a screenshot on the back of the box. They could. Yeah. Symphony of the Night, I think, be a good one to have on there. Yeah, yeah. Vagrant it, Story. Yeah, Vagrant Story would be good. It's a good JRPG, yeah. yeah. Defense, uh, Little Fencer Masashi. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, 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 I do. I, it's gonna be weird to hold that controller without having the extra. Oh, it'll controls. feel like garbage. Those controllers mm -hmm. are terrible. Yeah. It did, there's a lot. I think I would want to see. I want the full game list before I would ever consider pre-ordering this. Totally, and I, I would recommend most people should be that way. But yeah. Okay. First of all. This, this story has two parts, one good, one bad. New Devil May Cry trailer. I don't know about you guys, I think Devil May Cry 5 looks fucking great. Do you see Lady in the new trailer? She looks so cool. Yeah. You don't think so? I think she I think she looks cool in the sense that she's rendered well, but um, her outfit's the exact same as her original outfit. No, and it's not. It is. She. Oh, la well, mm, it kind of is. It's a kind of... Are you thinking of Trish? I'm thinking of Trish, but Ladies that is, is a idea. derivative of her original outfit. She has like a cool jacket and stuff now. Yeah, she also got assless chaps on. Oh, I don't think I saw that. I mean, it's fine. She looks fine. She looks cool, Neve. Admit it. <laughs> Why? Who wears assless chaps ever? Cool girls. Yeah, cool girls. <laughs> God damn it, I knew I was missing something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, I liked that she looked like, like much less stylized and much more just like a person. Like I thought her face mm. looked really cool and stuff. It still looks like, is Lady not human? Her, I think she's human. I think she's human. She still looks young in comparison to what Dante looks like now. I like how Dante looks like garbage. Yeah, like he looks old, but I'm just saying, why isn't she aging? Because women don't age, Neve. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But um, I, I think it looks really cool. I like the motorbike axes. Have you seen any of this, Brian? Nah. It looks really fun. He I'm sure uses it's really his cool. motorbike as weapons. It kind, of, it kind of splits. Am I the only one excited about this? No, I'm, I'm really excited. The gameplay looks cool and I like the tone of it. It seems like a fun time. Uh, just Trish in her exact same outfit. It's kind of... It's just disappointing because you're kind of like... I want to see her outfit 
progress in the same way Dante's does. Because you can take a Dante model from each game and he's wearing something different, but it's his personality. Mm. And it's just like, is, is Triss's personality just black pants, you know? And a I've, I've always thought Trish kind of sucks, like, just in general. Like, she was <laughs> never interesting and she her design was never cool. Mm. But, um, like, and, like, even she kind of fights, she has a sword. But, like, Lady has, like, guns and, like, she uses grenade launchers in weird creative ways and it's kind of fun. I kind of like the new girl. I like her style a lot. The new girl. She's kind of got the tick accent. She looks really weird to me. She's She looks like too much of a real person dropped into a video a game world. Bit. Did you see fucking Adam Driver in this game? Oh, V, the new character. Oh my god. He's great. Okay, suddenly I'm interested. Okay, yeah, there's a edgy, there's an even edgier boy mm -hmm. in this game. Adam and Driver's an edgy guy. Adam Driver. It just yeah. looks like a dude who, like, who would front like a new metal band. I'm not gonna lie. When he came on screen, uh, str on screen, I was like, "There we go. There's my character. Let's do this." Hi, John. It's me, Adam Driver. Oh, Adam. I think it looked cool, but yeah, there was a actually a whole bunch of controversy over this because this this was weird. There was a song in it, song in the trailer, and it was Dante's theme. And <clears throat> honestly, kind of just sounded like Devil May Cry music to me. A lot of people hated it though. They really did not like this music. Then it turns out that the lead singer of the band who performed Dante's theme is, he's in some thing where he, apparently he, I, I don't know what the story is, I guess allegedly, but yeah, it doesn't sound great. He emotionally manipulated a 17 year old girl into a sexual relationship and Capcom pulls that shit so fast. Super fast. Like, it was up a few hours, I think some people were like, hey, this, and then it was gone. So fast, I couldn't get, like, I couldn't see what they pulled. I was like, damn it. But, um, yeah, that's the right thing to do in that yeah. situation. They're really swift. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Do you yeah. think, they'll, like, good. they said that they, I, that they didn't know if they were able, it would be based on resources if they could change the song from the game itself, but it would be no longer part of any of the, um, promotional materials based on resources i think like in terms of getting a new song recorded and put in the game so their statement was kind of like based on kind of resources it's kind of a weird move to pull the trailer and then leave it in the main game yeah but maybe it's just to avoid um backlash for its press cycle and then they're kind of like well if the press is fine and clean then maybe people won't I'm sure they'll just hire someone else to sing it. I'm sure so. they will too, because that seemed like, like a weird... Otherwise it's kind of like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, it's kind of like... Like, at that point, mm. I would rather you just fucking leave it up and be like, it's there in the game. Because otherwise it's just like, well, we don't want people to get upset, but we're also not going to change it. I'm sure they'll change it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that game. Um, moving swiftly along. Damn fucking piece of shit. It's the end of the PS Vita. End of the PS Vita. What does this mean? It's over? Yeah. But it's the, I told us that I love the... Oh. They stopped manner of manufacturing it now and um, sending it out places. Fair enough. So, yeah. I've uh, had yeah, my... I had a good run. I've had my PlayStation Vita well, for five years. I got it in September 2013 and I got Persona 4 Golden and that was it. Yeah. And I got the Danganronpa games in 2014. Fuck yeah. Yep. Uh, I got Tearaway in late 2013 as well. Yeah, that that, that, that that was all five years ago. So my my history with the PlayStation Vita has been Dragon's Crown. Yeah, give that right. It's fine. Um, I played more Mass on the Vita as well. They had a port of that. Virtue's Last Reward. Yeah, which I I still have Brian's copy of that, and I still take it out every seven months, and I'm like, maybe I'll maybe I'll finish it this, and then I yeah. He doesn't? Um, I don't, and I will never give it back either. Nope. Nope. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. That's that's it. I, I, I take out my Vita every Christmas, and I download the weirdest fucking waifu shit I can find, and I just poke at that for a while. You literally poke at it, because that is a touchscreen console. Mm -hmm. The screen in that system is so fucking good. It's a beautiful piece of hardware. And that came out in spring 2012. That, that, that was a while back. Yeah. Came out one year after the 3DS, and it was mainly competing with that, but really was competing with Apple and Android and all that. Yeah. yeah. 
phones destroyed that thing mm-hmm. yeah. and like a lot of the main games on it like gravity rush and all that they ended up getting hd 60 frame per second ports to the ps4 it never had a chance they just sort of swept it under the rug playstation are really weird about like starting something and then pretending it never happened yeah. or just like they'll just completely like do you remember drive club yeah that just died Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was supposed to be like a free-to-play streaming game or some shit like that. And then it got postponed and then ended up just... Yeah, and because it was meant to be a free game with PS Plus, right? Yeah, at launch. And then they were like, yeah, no, we're pushing it back. And then it just died. It yeah. eventually came out, but it was bad, I think. Was, yeah. it, was mm. Deep Down a Sony thing? That was a Capcom, uh, like, Dark Souls, like, where you're just going down, you're playing at night, and you're kind of going into, like, start off in the castle, and you're going down, and I think you, like, you end up dying, and you've got another chance to get your loot again. There was some Assassin's Creed bullshit going on with that as well, though, where it was, like, some kind of, there was a modern day world in it, and it was weird. It had that part in the trailer where, like, the guy aims the spear, and you look down the spear and aim at the monster, and it looked fun. Brian, why don't you take us through the Nintendo Direct real quick? Sure, uh, it was a good one. Um, was they announced the 3DS games. They're still they're going to be making 3DS games until mid 2019, by the looks That's of it, so nuts. which is crazy. Um, then they did the Switch, and there's a Katamari game coming to the Switch, which is cool. Um, Splatoon update, or sorry, Splatoon 2 update, which is cool. I don't know what else they had. They had the Final Fantasy games. That's Crystal Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crystal Chronicles 7, 9, 10, 10, 2. Um, I, think, I think that's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. all of them. And, and mm-hmm. that mobile, yeah, yeah. Never mind, we don't need that other game. There's some other <laughs> <laughs> There's some other Final Fantasies I'd love to see on it. I'm so happy it's becoming a Final Fantasy machine. I'd love to see 8, obviously. Man, I've been going through some of like the cutscenes for 8. They were fucking great. Mm-hmm. Like, and I liked, I loved the cutscenes from seven and nine as well. But there was something to the cutscenes of eight, like just the way the music comes together with them and the editing was so out there. With, oh, it, man, just go back and watch that fucking intro in eight and yeah. try and tell me eight had nothing because there was really cool stuff. Eight's about great. It. People, I, like, I know, I people know. really maligned that game, and I do not get why. It, I think it's because Squall is such an unlikable dickhead. Yeah, but that's what's likable. Well, he no. learns to be likable. He does not. His sword Neve, is a gun. Neve, I'm an advocate of eight. He does not. He does. That's the whole narrative um, thing. It's like uh, Renoa makes him kind of see the value of his friends and then they find out they're all orphans. That's literally oh the story. I mean, this is this is the second podcast in a row where you're deconvincing me I like a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> Another Final Fantasy I would love to see on it is Crisis Core because I think that's such yeah. a great game and people not a lot of people no got to play it. Yeah. yeah. And it gives so much extra context to Seven and Cloud's like story. I think it's such a great game. I want um that vampire guy from Seven. I want his PS2 game. Dirge of Cerberus. Yeah. I don't yeah, that game's too edgy for me. <laughs> yeah, too edgy. Oh, I want that game. That game is that's like 11, 12 years old now. I want that shit. I've watched significant portions of it. It is something else. Cool game for cool boys. <laughs> yeah. I also love Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Advance, and Revenant Wings. What the fuck is Revenant Wings? It was a 3DS. No, it was a 3DS kind of spin-off of Twelve. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Really good game. Really fun. Twelve's a really good game. Mm-hmm. Totally. But um, I'm I'm really hope I love the idea that the Switch might get more and more Final Fantasies because that's such a great place to play them. Yeah. Um. Then what else? Um. I guess like the two main things is Isabel from Animal Crossing is in Smash. I was disappointed with that reveal trailer. Yeah. I wanted her to open up the door and walk outside into the village, except that the giant burning, like, smash logo is there, and I wanted to see it reflected in her tiny beady eyes. I think that would have been hilarious. It definitely wasn't as good as, like, the King K. Rool one, which was, like, you did not know that was happening. But, like, with the Isabel and Smash, you were like, oh, Isabel's in Smash, and then, like, you watch the trailer. And it's just this very cute, soft, endearing thing. Her moveset is very similar to the to the villagers. Is she an echo fighter for villagers? I don't think she's an echo fighter. Just she has. She's kind of like Luigi and Mario. Like you know, Luigi and Mario's moveset are very similar. They're one step apart again. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like it, in, like as in they're the same, but they're kind of different. Yeah. So it's the same thing with Isabel. 
But then they confirmed that they are developing a new Animal Crossing for the Switch and it's coming out in 2019. I saw people super happy about that and I'm glad we have a release date, but I kind of feel like, yeah, that's that's what was happening. Yeah, no, I, I like, for me, that's kind of like another Metroid Prime 4 thing where they're just like, here's the logo, that's all you're getting, just calm down. But even with Metroid Prime, it was like, I think that was in question because that series has been dormant for so long. Yeah. With Animal Crossing, it's like, yeah, of course, like, I mean, that's just... Switch and Animal Crossing is the most natural fit in the world. Yeah, and it's been five... Well, it's been six years. Animal Crossing New Leaf in Japan came out in 2012. And it came out here, like, over a year afterwards in 2013. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's long overdue that... Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm, I'm curious to see what they'll do with it this time to make it different. Um, was there anything else from that announcement? Like, nothing major. Okay. Because I got well, some bullshit. Well, well, oh, the, 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 the online. online. Oh, the yeah, the online. online. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I signed up to the online. I just did the free trial and I got my NES games. Mm -hmm. um, I might need to use it if I play Splatoon online, but not right now. Yeah. Uh, did you see all the really sad Splatoon online drawings that are all like, I won't be here, guys, after this because I can't afford it and stuff. And it was oh. like... I really... Like, I get that they got out in front of it and they were like... Oh, this is a trial or whatever, but I really, really feel like they should have left Splatoon and, you know, whatever else is out before the service, that shouldn't have been paid. Because yeah. Fortnite yeah. isn't paid. You can play Fortnite on your Switch without yeah. it. But, like, Splatoon and Mario Kart, you have to pay for it. Yeah. And, like, the NES games are done real weird, so, like, you you, uh, you uh, get a handful of NES games and a bunch of them are the ones that are already on the NES Classic. But you play them and they're in their, like, little box and around the side they kind of have, like, a watermark but they also have, like, the Eleanor controls to tell you, like, you can pause the game or save status, and they don't fade off screen. Oh, fuck So that. they're there the entire time. That's garbage. So you're playing the game, and it has, like, like I don't know, weird UI interface shit all around okay, it. like, with that kind of shit, I'm just like, you can't be surprised when people pirate your games. I'm not saying that pirating it is, like, justified, but you cannot, if you provide an inferior product and people pirate it and the pi pirating software is better than what you've done, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, it does not look pretty to look yeah, at. That sucks. Um, the save data, like the online save cloud stuff for PlayStation a lot. Yeah, same. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, some of the drawbacks of the Nintendo one are insane. Only some games have it. Yeah, that's nuts. And the reason for like, we don't want people to cheat. It's like, who fucking cares? Mm -hmm. It's so weird that that's their reason and now it's been hacked already to put on more than NES games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, you weren't... It, I, don't, I don't think that's a really... A, a reason. I think that's a reason they give, but I don't think it's the real reason. This thing's 20 euro a month, but I don't, or 20 euro a year, but I, I'd rather not pay for it. I don't see the value in it so far because the no. stuff that, like... The, the online play it was free up until this point, which seems to be taking away a feature. The save stuff is only for some games and is not great. <laughs> and the, the, the games that you can get, that's probably the biggest kind of feature because you can play those on your Switch, but they're on the NES Mini, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. Guys, can we talk about the real fucking bullshit with this Direct? Yeah. What was that horse shit? Horse shit, ladies and gentlemen, with Toadette. Did oh, yeah. you guys see this fucking abomination? So Toadette okay. is playable in New Super Mario Brothers. So first, U. just straight off the bat, Toadette is the worst thing Nintendo has ever done. She is fucking terrible, and I despise her. I hate her like I hate a real person. Oh my gosh, what did Toadette do? Be shit, Neve. Sorry, right, and. Paper Mario Thousand she Year Door. She is terrible in everything she's ever been in. She's in Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Yeah, she and teaches... she's she's better because that game's amazing, but she herself contributed nothing. She teaches how to become an airplane. She can fuck off. I'll teach her to become an airplane with my goddamn fists. So, Toadette's playable in this game, but it turns out that... I, I think she's in like an easy mode, but Toadette can eat a mushroom and become Peachette. Does that mean Peach is a big Toadette? Well... Peach, Peach it was originally called Princess Toadstool. Yeah. I think she is like a sen like she's a sentient mushroom just like the toads are, but she looks more human. No, no, I don't accept this at all. 
Peach is not Toadette. I will never fucking accept that. I, I do think Peach is like a, a super... Part mushroom. Yeah. like That's fine. Peach can be whatever she wants to be. But Peach is Peach. Well, I, 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 I do think at one point Peach might have looked like Toadette. No. No. I don't accept this. I think it's just something worth thinking about. No, it's not worth thinking about. There's nothing to think about. But now, Nintendo fucked up. They made a mistake. Nintendo will apologize for this by the end of the year. I guarantee it. No, I, I think they've moved their focus on to people combining Peach and Bowser. And oh make, my god, yeah. What, have you seen what that happened? Shit? Yeah. So, in the last 24 hours, <laughs> someone, or a bunch of people have all just gotten into this fucking hive mind where they're like, this is what Peach would look like if she was wearing Bowser's crown, and it's just a dark, sexy Princess Peach. Yeah, it's like, like literally the boobs a are out. Swap. She's got the eyes. She has one of that little toot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate the internet, John. I think you'd really like it. Yeah, you would. I am very aware of this trend. And do you approve? <laughs> John approves. Johnny boy, you love it. You did fanner. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Woo! Okay, this is this is the last story of our uh, quick time events. Yeah, this is a bummer. This is a shit show. Telltale shutdown. This sucks. Yeah. Um, this is really sad for a lot of reasons. Um, The Walking Dead season one, one of my favorite games I've ever played. It's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. And in a lot of ways, I still think like. I still think that genre hasn't really had anything that hit me the way that hit me. And that makes me sad because it feels like it's kind of dying now. It's It was like the birth of a new genre, that game. Like, yeah. just kind of, it, it ushered in a new style of game. Yeah. Because like, and I think that was nearly one of the things that made it special because, you know, there is a lot of smoke and mirrors with The Walking Dead and general Telltale games. We didn't really know that then. Mm-hmm. And, oh man. But then on the other hand, you know, in a lot of ways, Telltale, and like, obviously it's not good that people lost their jobs or anything. Telltale sounded like a real shitty company for a really long time. Yeah. Did they, you guys read that Verge story that came out a couple of months back? Yeah. About burnout and crunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was just like, from, from the sounds of it, basically, there were two people who were the lead directors of The Walking Dead season one. They left after that. And then another guy, I, th- I can't remember his name. He he kind of took over. He was one of the owners of the company and he was like really driven to just recreate the formula that the two kind of leads had created with Walking Dead season one. And they just did it over and over and over. And if you actually look at like a list of the amount of games that Telltale released in the last couple of years, there were so many Walking Dead games I'd never heard of, like Walking Dead Frontier or stuff like that, I, I don't know. And um, it sounded like there was a really excessive crunch culture and that's most, the really terrible part about it is like that the, the employees were let go without any severance, any kind of package, anything. Uh, I read a Kotaku article today and one of the guys was working up until 3am the night before completely unaware that the next day that that was going to happen. So that's just how crazy the crunch was and how crazy like it was let get. Yeah. There was a quote I read. I think I might have read the same article, but he said some, they said something like, um, you know, don't, you know, give your life to companies. They do not care about you. And I think I, I, I think people getting into any kind of industry, it is important to remember that that stuff can just happen. And, you know. Crunch is not something that people should be doing to that excess. No, and like, never in any kind of sustained way. Yeah, it's just like, that is a failure on the production. That is a failure of scheduling. That is not something that devs and artists and animators should have to be engaging with. Their work-life balance and their health should not suffer because of a company's bad management yeah and it sucks um it's it's a sad story in a lot of ways because like i think they really did have something special and it just got driven into the ground yeah what was the last like telltale game you played or like how long ago was it the batman one from last year last year uh wolf among us that was from 2013 yeah Yeah. I i think i might have played 400 days as well I think I played. I think the last one I played was 400 Days Walking mm. Dead, 
Um, and like I, I, I like a bunch of them were on PS Plus. Like I don't know how well their sales were. Like a lot of them were people wouldn't buy it right away, or like yeah. they, they'd wait until it went cheap. It's because they were so formulaic that you were kind of like, I can give that one a skip, or maybe I'll pick that up when it's cheap, or when it goes on to P- PSN, or whatever. But even literally, all I played was Walking Dead Season 1, Wolf Among Us, Episode 1, mm-hmm. um, 400 Days. Those seven episodes and all. By the end of 400 Days, I was like, oh, okay, I'm kind of I'm kind of getting bored now. I loved um, The Wolf Among Us. I thought it was really fun. I really liked the characters in that. So they were working on a sequel to it. So it's kind of... It's sad that that will never see the light of day. It stopped mid-season for their last Walking Dead season as well. It's only plays Clementine. I think you have a little kid with you and it's like you shaping the little kid. Yeah. But yeah. And they were making uh, a Stranger Things uh, adaptation with Netflix. That's a shame. That probably would have done pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think the Game of Thrones one did okay. I've heard... I've never played it. I've heard people complain that it's like not their best. No. Yeah, and that it's ugly. That's the thing. It's like visually from like their first game to their last game, not much changed in yeah. that. They're all they're department. all just cell shaded looking characters, and they'll add in like weird line scars on their mm-hmm. cheeks that don't do anything. I was looking back at some footage from Walking Dead season one. I just thought like it it still looks all right for a mm-hmm. game made in two thousand thirteen, but the same art style on you know 2018 games it's a bit like yeah uh, when i was playing batman like even noticing some of the pop in of that texture and stuff it's kind of like oh you're kind of relying on this look so much now and it kind of has its place in a few things but it you kind of wanted them to push the boat out and i'm sure everyone else who worked there kind of wanted that creative freedom like a lot of the article was about them not getting creative freedom at all and how they just had to stay on this conveyor belt and weren't allowed to push the formula. Apparently there was a very like critical culture like people would have these hour long like hours long performance reviews where they'd be really like just torn down and just kind of it sounded bad like it did not sound like a good place to work but yeah that sucks really hope everyone kind of finds their way after that place why don't we take one or two Okay, uh, this first one is from Zoop Joestar, and it's, you guys don't talk about music all that much. Do you listen to music much? What's music? What do you listen to? So this is an, an email about music. Do we listen to music? What? What is music? John does not listen to music. John listens to screaming. <laughs> um, what do I listen to? I just listen to SoundCloud. I just... I'll listen to Future Funk playlists that are like an hour long and then two hours later I'll be listening to a song I really like and I have no idea what that song is called and I'll never hear it again and it sucks but it's also kind of nice. Okay, so I listen to a lot of Spotify Discover but you know how I do that thing with Tumblr where I save every image? Oh no. Really? You're downloading every song? For what reason? What if I need them in a video? Yeah, that's a good Fair, idea. Fair, that's yeah, a good yeah. reason, yeah. That's a really oh, good reason. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the reason for Tumblr as well, then. <laughs> no. Maybe someday I'll do a video on sexy Princess Peach. John's dirty drawers. Neve, how about you? What you li- Neve listens to Nine Inch Nails. I go all over the place. Like, I'd like some Britney. Then I want to go yeah. to Nine Inch Nails. Then I want to go to Schoolboy Q. Then I want to go to... I don't know, some K-pop. Like, I like to vary it up depending on my mood. Yeah, that's kind of why I have trouble answering questions about music because I like a lot of different kinds of music. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't really, like, I never have a conversation about, oh, this is what I like about this band or this song. I just enjoy listening to music and I don't really think about it that much. But I listen to a lot of, like, hard electro stuff a lot of kind of 80s synth wavy stuff i like music to either be really really ambient or really fast and hard and yeah. not kind of nothing in between yeah yeah so there you go we we do like music and we all like karaoke as well yeah um 
we get very nostalgic when it comes to karaoke, but we sure can sing. We sure can. Uh, okay, and this, <laughs> I like this email. Uh, so I'll read out the full email because it's good. This is from Nick. While hanging out and talking at lunch at high school, the girls in the group for fun decided to ask all the guys in the group what the size of their dick wow. is. And then they asked me and I got very scared and embarrassed. Yeah, I would too were yeah. I a teenager or a full grown man. No matter what the age, yeah. What's the most embarrassing situation of this type you've had? Oh, fuck. Okay, so Nick, what we're going to do is... We're just going to talk about embarrassing moments in high school, okay? Is that kind of what you want? Yeah, like, because I can't relate. Hmm. <laughs> she can't relate. <laughs> so I guess, like, embarrassing high school stories. Okay, I got one. Yeah. In fact, I have many. <laughs> but we'll do. stick to this one. I guess this wasn't technically high school. This was in a FETAC course after high school. But, um... <sighs> okay, so... We're going through a very rainy patch in Ireland. And... My shoes kept getting wet going to the FETAC course. But the FETAC course took place in this, like, technical school. And technical schools in Dublin can be, like, a little rough. You know, because it's kind of, you know, it's for schools for, you know, kids who, like, drop out of regular schools or just don't want to go to regular schools. Maybe they're just better suited as this kind of stuff. But you can get, like, a, a rougher crowd. And, um... So, to stop my problem of my shoes getting wet, I put plastic bags. Oh, that's, what, that's something, like, a weird dad does. Did your parents know you were putting bags on your shoes? I don't think so. <laughs> So then anyway, it was piss and rain. So I get to the place and like, you know, I have my rain jacket on, I have my rain pants on, I have my plastic bags on my feet. And so I start walking up the stairs and the hall was completely filled with these kids because it was raining out and they were all packed into the hall. And as I was ascending the stairs, they went completely quiet. And I get to the top of the stairs and I look behind me and I met with like 300 angry, rough Dublin children looking up at me and looking down at my feet. And it was one of the weirdest moments of my entire life. And for some fucking reason, I hear my voice start to speak and it just said I had to wear the bags because I didn't want my feet to get wet. And they fucking exploded in laughter. And I continued my way up the stairs. And they never let me live it down for the rest of that year. Jesus. I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, that's fucking par for the course. You know it. It's fine. Yeah. I like the idea of this, like, straight silence when you kind of go into the room. It was... It's just like, he's different. <laughs> it was that, though. It was eerie. Like, you... Mm -hmm. It was... They all... There wasn't even one of them fucking... The hive mind. Yeah. In school, it's very easy to, like, pick someone out based on their shoes. Like, the shoes are, like, a real go-to. Like, shoes or haircut are, like... It's very easy to point something out that's different about them. And they were in a uniform as well. So all wearing the exact same clothes. It was weird. Yeah. Fucking uniforms are weird. Uh, I went to a school where you didn't have to wear a uniform. You could wear whatever you wanted. I went to a grind school. And in grind schools, you call the teachers by their first names. And you just wear a hoodie and jeans to school. And as long as you get a good leaving search, which I didn't, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, I think the most embarrassed I've ever been in school is, like, it's just one of those lessons you learn in secondary school, but, like, don't ever be, like, the mo the loudest or, like, most attention-seeking person in the room ever in secondary school or high school. Keep your mouth shut. Like, just, just look on at someone else fucking taking the spotlight and fucking up. Yeah. Because I did it once or twice, and I'm like, man, I, I should really stop doing that. So I did. But I think this is the second time. This was the lesson learned where... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was doing like trying to tell jokes and like when you're when you're 16, 17, your jokes are shit. Yeah. And so I think I did an impression of one of the teachers and like teacher was right behind me. Of course. And I fucked up and then it's just me just being like, I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> I re I I'm 
I really didn't mean to. And like, you just look like the biggest. And like, you, you, like you do not, you, like you do not call the teacher sir or miss in this school. Oh Jesus! And so then you just get made fun of for doing that for the rest of the year, just looking like a complete fucking coward. Uh, mine's a bit earlier. Mine is national school. Uh, I was a big fan of Jackie Chan. Okay, we're off to a fucking great start. <laughs> okay. And climbing. So I used to spend a lot of time trying to like, you know, bounce off a corner and climb things in a Jackie Chan type way. I was in the bathrooms with a bunch of other girls and I thought it would be cool if I climbed the little stall. So I put my back against one wall and my feet against the other and I climbed all the way up to the top until my head was looking over. And I could see, and I was like, this is cool. And then a teacher was like, Neve Bennett, get down from there. I slipped and I fell directly onto my back. <laughs> so it was just like this like flipped over turtle being like, oh, and I was completely winded and they didn't want to move me. <laughs> so they had to call my parents. And it was just cause I had like Jackie Chan up the bathroom and fallen over. But I didn't live that down as well. And then there was like a whole pile of stories about how I was trying to look at people over the thing. And I was just oh, like, no, no, I was being, yeah. So there you go. Don't don't try climb a, a wall. That's such a fun story because you would never try and climb anything now. No, no. I no, like to be firmly on the ground now. And unmoving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just remembered another primary. So yeah, so this is primary school as well. So I think I was like seven or eight when this happened. Uh we were it was quiet time where you're just like going through your notes or writing down your homework so it's written up on the blackboard and you have to copy it down into the copy book and that's where everyone has to be quiet and i did a big loud fart and everyone looked around and nobody said anything and like an infinity of time passed and i felt so fucking bad <laughs> i went sorry oh, oh, no. <laughs> And everyone looked and laughed at me. And from that moment on, I decided I will never feel guilty again. And I, I will, I, I will from now on get away with that shit because you don't apologize oh my ever. God, that was the, that was the genesis of modern Brian. Yeah. Never, ever feel bad for anything you've ever done. I got one more and it was, there was like in sixth year, I had this like art teacher yeah. and she was really nice and I really liked her. But then start, people started being like, Oh, John's in love with the art teacher. And I was like, whatever. But then I got the award for art that year. And yeah. I had to go up in front of the school and take it. And everyone started chanting, John loves the art teacher. As I took the oh, award no. for art. <laughs> and I was like, oh God. And like, I went so fucking red and I was so embarrassed. But then afterwards, she was like, John, can I talk to you for a second? And I was like, oh God. And she took me outside and she was really nice. And like, we, did, we were like friendly-ish. And she gave me like a drawing she'd done just to say goodbye. Cause I was like graduating. And as she did, loads of students walked by and they all started chanting it again. And I wanted to fucking die. And then that night I was in bed and I was like, I don't love the art teacher. And then I was like, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, that sucked. So we're gonna move on into our loose drops. Not Patreon shoutouts. I don't know what order we do this. Yeah, this this is. I keep this... going back and forth in my mind over which should come where. I think the answer is it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. This is the bit at the end of the podcast where we do the tidying up. Yes. Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what do you got? My loot drop is a YouTube channel called Half as Interesting. Have you ever been recommended these videos? No. Um, they're nice. They're, they're they're like five ten minutes, and they're 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 a good watch. They have like ones where it's like made up neighborhoods in Google Maps. A what? And so like. A lot of the way they do Google Maps sometimes is they'll search blogs and like there'll be like nicknames for areas and then they'll become the actual names of areas and Google Maps. Oh, weird. And then all of a sudden people are saying it in real life. And it's like that's not officially recognized by like the city. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like a nickname yeah. becomes the official name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then like stuff like 
islands that are like weird sovereign islands that don't really belong to any particular nation and like Google Maps doesn't know how to like figure out who they belong to um, there's another one on like what's going to happen when the queen dies and it's like the protocol for when the queen dies and like apparently every six months they make like a retrospective video and they'll update it with new footage so That's... that like the moment she dies the news will just change 10 seconds later and they'll have the announcement they have those for loads of people and i remember hearing like as a rumor when i was younger that like or in college that they had one for Lindsay lohan they had one written for like the queen the pope and Lindsay lohan because she could have died at any moment she was, she was very big back yeah then. Imagine, imagine there was someone imagine if there was one of them about you that's so fucked up isn't, isn't it, it? And like they have like yeah, the kind of a gap that. for the date and the time and maybe how oh, you died. That, that's creepy. Yeah, like, and oh. they've like deta- detailed what was I guess important of your life, and they're like, yeah. okay, that's ready to go. Man, I can't. But a, 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 apparently, when the queen dies, and like she's in her nineties now, so I don't know. Um, I'm not saying anything, but like, the, the, like, like the whole UK is gonna have to shut down for a couple of days, and like, it will lose a shit ton of money. Like, like the economy is going to crash in the UK while, while, while they go into national mourning for the Queen's death. Like, it, it's just they're really weird and interesting videos mm. where you're like, okay, yeah, that's like I, I'll watch them and I'm like, all right, I'll watch another one of these tomorrow, not right now, but you know, there you uh, go, everyone. I got, uh, I got a video from our girl Strucky Movies. Is that her name? Yeah, Strucci, 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 Shannon. Yeah, Shannon. Um, she did a really cool little video on a Korean manhwa called Sweet Home, and I'd never I'd never read webtoons before, but well I, I'd read one or two, but this this is the first kind of sustained one I've been reading, and it's just a really cool little web comic. Um, it's basically a bunch of people get trapped in an apartment during a zombie apocalypse. Only twist is that the zombies aren't zombies; they're monsters, and they all used to be people but they turn into very specific monsters based on like their personalities and stuff and so they all have like really individual powers but what's cool is it's like you know it'll be a known fact that this monster frequents this hall and so if you're going to go down this hall to get to this place you have to know how to deal with that monster a lot of stuff like that really interesting and fun there's some really good stuff about like um I guess, like, kind of weird, like, mental health stuff and a tying into that as well. And it's just a very nicely considered comic series. So my loot drop is going to be that comic series as well as the video recommending it. And they're both good. And I would say, you know, I know people have different sensitivity to spoilers and stuff. I really don't think Strucci ruins any of it. I think she went into kind of, like, a fair amount of detail without, like, kind of spoiling any of it. But it's cool. It's worth checking out. What do you got, Neve? I have a channel, Simone Gertz channel. Uh, you might know her from the crappy robot series. Oh, yeah. The yeah. crappy inventor. So she'll make a, a shitty robot or shitty robots, I think it's called, um, that will do something like to, to chop vegetables and it'll just be a knife kind of flailing. Or there's one that's great um, that's you might have seen where it's like a, an electronic arm giving a baby a bottle, but it just like <laughs> it just knocks the, the yeah. dummy baby out of the way. Um, so she used to make these like shitty inventions and record herself doing them and she was really like like just kind of making her name for herself on YouTube and then she got a brain tumor and she had to have surgery and she kind of details what it was like being diagnosed with a brain tumor getting through that kind of what her scar looks like now and she's still continuing with her channel and updating it it's become a bit more vloggy but she still makes stuff and if you're into just um like it's it's still about making stuff if you're into inventions and stuff going from literally concept to finished shitty invention all in the one like space of 15 minutes then this is great like the last one i watched was um a Pez tampon dispenser <laughs> and they were like we can do that and like like her and her friend makes it in the course of the episode and they're 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 both really funny it's a uh, really interesting to see them problem solve and she tried to make the spring mechanism but it like she was like it was too complicated so foam worked better and it's just like if you like to see people problem solve on stupid shit then Simone's channel is is really good highly recommend now we'll do the shout outs now we'll do the shout outs Um, 
Okay, so we got this first one from Krantek. Hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I know you're not part of the Discord here. What are you waiting for? Joining the Discord will give you a plus five to strength and cure baldness. It literally saved my marriage. Do it now. You know, I was skeptical until he said it saved his marriage because I could see this podcast saving marriages for sure. Um, <laughs> Neve, could you read this next one from Jodio-san? Join us. Very good. I have another one here uh, from Sharky Crunk. That's a great name. One of us. One of us. Google gobble, Google gobble. What? Uh, what? There really seems like there's an overlap with all these. Um, thank you, you dear sweet patrons. Ah, uh, yes. That's patreon.com forward slash LFAB. Mm-hmm. Thank you for supporting us and making everything we do possible. Yeah, thank you for donating entirely too much to this podcast. We really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, we're going to do something cool very soon. Oh, yeah. We have a certain reward tier that we want f- uh, that we said we'd fulfill. Let's just say that everything is in place and we're going to be pulling the trigger very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, that's another episode. Episode 85? Four? 84. Four. We're always... I think it's because I get it wrong one ahead every time. So then the next one over, I still think we're wrong. But yeah, I'm ready to go to sleep. Me too. I want to look up some Bowser fan art. It's the best thing Nintendo have ever done. Okay, everyone, you're getting tucked in. Oh, God. Brian, tell, tell them a good night <laughs> story. It was a dark and stormy night. Oh, God. And the townspeople went forth to Antonio. Antonio, they said, tell us a story. And so Antonio began the story. It was a dark and stormy night. And the townspeople went for to Antonio. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Get set. Enjoy. Repeat <laughs> <laughs> that. Repeat that. They'll make a one of us. A loving cup. A loving cup. We accept the one of us. We accept the one of us. Move of gobble.